It is 7 o'clock. I'm calling this Germantown School District board meeting to order. If you would, please stand if you're able and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. Official meeting notification, Mr. Stelz. Yes, public notice of all meetings has been given by communication from the superintendent's office to the public, to those news media who requested such notices, and to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Sentinel Northwest Now, Express News, and West Bend Daily News. Public notice has also been posted in schools throughout the district and on gsdwi.org website as well as cable access channel 96. Roll call. Saturn. Here. Here. Sorry. Method. Here. Lowe? Here. Gordon? Here. Barney? Here. Brian? Here. Pollock? Here. Approval of the agenda. agenda. Do I have a motion? Motion, motion to approve the agenda. agenda. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passed. Before we move on to citizen comments, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Salsa with a couple of important recognitions tonight. Yes, first, um, uh, leading, leading up to the, the last day of school, uh, Mr. Nowak and I were at all the different schools handing out um, years of service awards and retirement awards, and um, there's one person on our board that is receiving the tenure award, and that's Bob Soder. And the last... Um, Acknowledgement uh, goes to Jane Morrison, if Jane would come up here for a second. I know she loves being on stage. Um, actually, I think it's coming to you. So Jane has been with us for 26 years, and she's uh, retiring. She's been a board member, as well as my right arm, left arm, and everything else, and I appreciate everything. She's done for the district and for myself. Congrats. Thank, thank you for all you've done. done. You will be missed. You're welcome. Very much so. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Okay, okay before, before we begin citizen comments, I'd like to remind everybody that we're going to try to keep it to an hour. I don't think that's going to be possible tonight. Um, but I would ask everyone to keep their comments as brief as possible. Please be respectful. Um, and be respectful of all speakers that speak tonight. And I would also ask that there be no personal attacks on board members or community members or administrators. Um, I will begin with, I will call two people and I will call the next person that's going to be on deck. So when I call your name, please come up and be ready. Ellen Goldry and Melissa Thurman. We'll try and keep things moving tonight. Good evening. You ready for me? I want, I want to address yet another email that was sent out to the entire Germantown School District teaching staff by Brenda O'Brien, our Director of Teaching and Learning, in October of 2020. I will read the email to you now. It says, in reading the latest issue of Educational Leadership, I found this link to children's books on social justice. While the main focus is for elementary, the website includes titles for middle school and high school as well as professional reading around these topics. As we continue to grow resources so we can better represent all students in text, please let me know if you would want to add titles to align with your curricular topics. Additionally, when teaching around social justice and using articles, texts, and books as resources and teaching multiple perspectives, ask the students whose story isn't being told at the end of the reading. This will prompt discussion around other perspectives that might not be revealed in one text. A link to these books is also provided by Brenda in the, in the body of her email. A few titles include Activism and Organizing, Black Lives Matter at School, and White Identity, just to name a few. I have heard numerous times from this board that CRT is only included in two AP classes. I suggest we all remove our rose-colored glasses. Can anyone honestly look us in the face and still say that this is the case? Brenda literally has given teachers free reign to add these CRT books and topics to, quote, align with school curriculum. 
How can any of, any of you say that CRT is not in our schools, not in every single classroom, starting with the youngest and most impressionable of our students? This is nothing short of brainwashing and has no place in our classrooms, and I demand action and change from the school board. This is simply unacceptable. It is not up to the schools to take time away from real school-related learning in the classroom, such as math, reading, and writing, to indoctrinate our children. These are topics for parents to discuss at home if they so desire. As a first-generation immigrant, I know the impact of Marxism and communism that it has, what it has on people. It indoctrinates and it divides the people. It teaches hate, not love. This is CRT. Why would any of us want this for our children and in our schools? Lastly, I have a son going into middle school, and with the increase in social unrest and social related shoot and school related shooting, excuse me, I am extremely bothered and opposed to the, to the decision to eliminate the SRO position at Kennedy Middle School. Putting our children in potential jeopardy is very disturbing. I know we have budget issues, but the safety of our children should not carry a price tag. I am sure there are other budget cuts that could be made that are much less important than this one. None of us has a crystal ball and can predict when a tragedy could happen at the school. I truly feel that the presence of the SRO officer not only teaches kids to respect and value our police officers, but also could make someone think twice or deter them from entering our schools with potential horrible intentions and consequences. Additionally, issues relating to drugs, alcohol, and truancy often start at the middle school level. The earlier we can get to the kids having these types of issues, the better the outcome is for the student. In some cases, to try to redirect a troubled student at the high school level is too late. Please reconsider this decision. Hi, Tim. I'll be reading um, something from another Germantown parent. Good evening. First of all, I want to thank both Tom and Mike for responding to my message yesterday. I appreciate the follow-up, especially on Father's Day. And thank you to the board for taking the time to listen tonight. I have attended nearly every board meeting since the topic of CRT was introduced. I have chosen not to speak, but to listen and do my own research. Clearly, as you look across this great nation, we are not the only school district allowing this divisive curriculum discussion to tear our community apart and create unnecessary division. You've already heard from so many great people in this room, and you know yourself, Germantown is a great community, and I'm guessing many of you on that stage know in your heart this curriculum is not the appropriate path for Germantown schools. As we reflect on the discussions regarding CRT and masks, over the past few months, I feel we are missing some of the most important discussions regarding quality of education and returning Germantown to its premier educational status. Tonight, I'm asking the board to do the right thing. Stop this ongoing debate surrounding CRT and let's collectively work to better this school district. Let's focus on building unity in this community. Let's be different from those other school systems that continue to let this fight rage on. I have heard some of you say, this is the most interesting board meetings you have ever seen. Leverage that, and let's change the conversation to something we can all stand behind, which is a great education for our kids. Over the past few months, I've heard and seen enough. It's time to move on, stop the CRT discussion, and be the shining example in the state and maybe even the country of what great leadership looks like. Step up and be bold for the betterment of the kids in this school district. Thank you. Before I start, I just want to recognize one thing, in that us parents behind me have been dedicated to this cause every single meeting. And I find it very interesting that this other side only shows up when there's cameras involved. <laughs> to open with, I want to open with, I just want to briefly say that this school board continues to lack transparency across many areas. One, the board has failed to stop Brenda O'Brien, the Director of Teaching and Learning, from pushing CRT and its Marxist Socialist Justice and Indoctrination Agenda. It's part of the curriculum across the entire school district, which only continues to blame racism and divide in our schooling community. Two, we, ask, we have asked, but have yet to see any transparency for the ACE Committee and its subcommittees, which leads us all to wonder what they are trying to hide. So again, we're going to on record that we do not support ACE and we want it and its equity agenda out of the school. 
Now, no, this brings me to the most recent item that has been handled in a very non-transparent manner. The decision to eliminate the school resource officer at Kennedy Middle School. My husband is a retired police officer with 30 years of decorated service. So I take personally issue with such a nonsensical decision. I want to share with everyone here what the middle school SRO contributes to the school. The SRO serves three main roles law enforcer, mentor, counselor, and an educator. According to the Germantown Police Department's latest audit, I mean, I'm sorry, latest annual report, the SRO assigned primarily to the Kennedy Middle School work close, works closely with the school staff and administrators to ensure the safety, security, and welfare of all students, faculty, staff, and visitors, and it also serves as a student wellness, serves on the student wellness committee. Throughout the year, she gives presentations to both students and parents on topics such as school safety, dangerous vaping, and the dangerous effects of drugs and alcohol abuse. She drives parental programs that include assistance with online safety to help parents recognize potentially dangerous apps that children may be using, as well as identifying online bullying and sexting occurrences. During Red Ribbon Week, she presented the drunk uh, goggle demonstration to show students the impairment in drugs and alcohol can have in one judgment. She attends and monitors the youth's futures lock-ins, the eighth grade promotion dance, and assists with many of the high school athletic events and various dances. Speaking from my husband's point of view and in 30 years of experience, I quote, with the current attack on our police across the country, rising hate crimes, rising school shootings, this is the time the school board has picked to eliminate this critical position. All in the interest of expense cutting, has this board lost its mind? This is the time when this position is of the utmost importance. We need these officers to teach our kids that, to, that police are there to protect them, that they deserve and have earned our respect. If you don't break laws, they will not bother you. The most importantly, I mean, one second, and most importantly, when you do get in trouble, they teach our kids no, no Kathleen, to, to be respectful and complete and comply to create mutually positive interactions, end quote. If the school is looking to cut expenses, I would encourage the board to look at eliminating a position that has consistently brought in CRT curriculum into the school, such as your director of teaching and learning, Ms. Brenda O'Brien, and retain the position that actually brings Value and safety. To, to, we're going to show you the same respect, you know. Value and safety to the school, such as the school resource Guys. officer. Thank you. Kelly, Kelly, and then Gary Point Dexter is on deck. Good evening. I've, I've spoken, spoken before about CRT, the racist, racist the Marxist backing. backing. Um, you know, generally people believe this to be true. We also believe it to not be correct for Germantown School District. Um, that, that seems, seems to be most, most of us except for Brenda. Brenda. Um, we, have we have had open records requests from Brenda, Brenda and it just proves that she continues to push this topic. topic. We, we may, may not be teaching it, and if the school board thinks that it's not being taught or pushed, it's ignorance, because, because her open, open records requests have revealed that she is definitely pushing this topic in the schools. schools. We, we don't, don't need to continue to divide with these divisive measures. We need to be able to talk as adults. We, we are, are the, the silent, silent majority. majority. It, it may, may not look like it in this room right, right now, but, but we, we are, are the silent majority, majority and we're not going to continue to be silent. We, we are going, going to come out and we are going to fight against this. this. And, and her, her position, position isn't an elected position, position so, so we, we cannot, cannot directly unelect her, but we will start to elect people that don't support her. Because this country is not, everybody has said it's a democracy, it's a democracy. Correction. It is a constitutional republic. We use democratic processes that are enforced by the Constitution, the supreme law of the land. There is a framework for the government. If we taught this in school, we would know this, and it limits the power of government. We have stood by and watched the government overreach. We have watched school boards and schools overreach into our children's minds. It is time for that to stop. We need to have adult conversations about this, not the heckling, not the argument. We need to be respectful. We need to have adult conversations. We're not going to continue to stand for it. 
Good. Gary and then Liz, Paolo is on deck. Keeping up with woke terminology is like playing whack-a-mole. If you ban a phrase like critical race theory, those promoting these ideologies simply change a definition or use a different term. A case in point, at the 26th April board meeting, Brenda O'Brien referred to CRT as a literary theory. Quoting from the minutes, Director of Curricula Brenda O'Brien provided clarity on critical race theory in the district and why theories are taught. She then uses the phrase, one of the tools of literary theory, and states if we begin to ban certain literary theories. CRT is not a literary theory. You've heard lots of definitions. To refer to CRT as a literary theory is a blatant mischaracterization. On 26 April, Superintendent Stausman used the phrase, the only place critical race theory appears in the district is in two high school elective courses that teach a list of different theories. He repeats the phrase often. A Germantown School District resident through a FOIA request obtained communications between Brenda O'Brien and Ubuntu where they are discussing a virtual workshop for up to 150 staff members. The primary email of the exchange is dated 29 September 2020, full seven months before Superintendent Stoutsland's statement first appeared in the board minutes. In the email exchange and proposal, there are references to items such as already in place, a recommendation to Rook Book, read a book titled Me and My White Supremacy, referenced as chosen by two high school English teachers. I point out the stated goal of the proposed workshop is racial accountability for the school district and the term intersectionality. Racial accountability, white supremacy, or core concepts of CRT ideology. Intersectionality is often used interchangeably with CRT. The email thread demonstrates the ideology of CRT has been in the school district for more than eight months, and the spread of the ideology is being led by a member of the district administration. You cannot solve a problem until you acknowledge its existence. The superintendent is either in denial or is complicit. Next topic. I'm an Alice instructor, which means I teach run, hide, fight to students, staff, and teachers. You are considering dropping or you, decide, you have decided to drop an SRO position. As an Alice instructor and a student of school violence events, I can, I can think, think of nothing, nothing worse. You, you should be expanding the number of SROs in the district, eliminating our SRO position is foolish, dangerous, and short-sighted. Representative Nodal last month referred to CRT as a cancel. Cancer, I concur. If you need to eliminate a position, consider eliminating their director of teaching and learning. Keep the SRO position. This solves one problem and prevents another. A win-win for the district. I thank you very much. And then Jody Graff is on deck. I'm going to start by reading an email that was sent to the CRT reporting forum that we made. So, were you dropped on your head as a child? Has your mother ever expressed that you should have been swallowed? Your white privilege is so infused into your brain that you cannot understand the systematical racism that still occurs today. Real Quick Citation is a study that UW-Madison connected with four applicants, all the same resume, only difference were that two were white and two were black. Tell me how systematical racism doesn't still exist when the white felon got more callbacks than the black applicant without a record. What are you scared of from children learning unwhitewashed history and the reality of how their peers are treated outside of your white bubble? You make Germantown look horribly racist. There is a reason that it is hardly any diversity in the area. You can't even think critically to understand CRT. Probably can't even define it without Googling it. May God be unmerciful when judging your disgusting soul. So that's fun. So here's what I have to say. If people who support and believe in the CRT narrative can engage in this type of degrading and vile behavior while hiding behind a computer screen, how do we expect children to behave kindly towards one another when this is what we teach them? How are our youngest learners supposed to love and accept one another when they are told that they are inherently bad or inherently a victim because of the color of their skin? CRT is more than a singular classroom topic. It is an entire ideology that is meant to fundamentally change our educational system. The Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction recently held a webinar for teachers. 
the presenters of that webinar told the teachers, you are a co-conspirator with your student. In what world would any parent think that is okay? This is the material that is being presented to our teachers. This is what is trickling into our classroom. We have failing math and reading proficiency scores amongst our high school students. We are substituting foundational education with progressive politics and leaving students with no basic knowledge, understanding, or skills. CRT and this woke schooling is morally wrong, and parents across each district and every state are rising up against it. You all have received the sources that I have sent to you, and for the news crew, if you would like to practice some objective journalism, I will happily provide you with those 80 resources as well. Thank you. Following Father's Day plus Mother's Day last month, I'd first like to start by celebrating and thanking every single person in this room Personally, I like to look at these holidays as an opportunity to honor all people who make a positive difference in the lives of others. And so I thank and applaud all of you who come here with the best intentions to stand up for our community and protect our students. Because that's what we all want, right? We want every child to recognize their potential and get excited to excel beyond their perceived capabilities. We want all children to not give the slightest thought about the pigment of another's skin, but rather to appreciate that individual story and support one another in hard work to get where they'd like to be, all the while enjoying their school experience and having fun being surrounded by their friends and peers. This is very simple. School is a place to learn and develop skills. It is not a place for politics, nor for teachers to push their personal beliefs or opinions. School is a place to celebrate our students' individuality and to nurture them to flourish and to stand up responsible and respectful contributors to society. Individual integrity, hopes, dreams, and results are all that should ever be allowed to define a person. Never should we ever categorize one another, and most especially not our students. It's 2021, and there is no room to allow divisive training into any of our children's schooling. And if we have to ban it from our AP classes, fine. We should get rid of those AP classes if they support racism. Replace them with something more meaningful and respectful. Equality, equal opportunity to excel, the drive to be the best they can be. We don't want our students to have equity with their peers when they're all just hit a ceiling and there's no motivation to excel. We want our district to meet all children at their current level and propel them to their fullest academic potential. And with all due respect to those of our teachers who are phenomenal, the teachers don't get to decide what they teach our kids. We the parents are here telling you, do not teach our children racist hate. So don't just ban CRT, proudly ban any and everything that could possibly divide our kids from one another. Proudly ban any manipulation of our teachers via divisive and racist professional development. Proudly ban any allowance or worse, encouragement from our own director for teachers to go rogue on their lesson plans and report back to her with evidence of progress from what they're implementing in the classroom behind our backs. Reprimand racism and have zero tolerance for anyone who attempts to bring division, discrimination, or segregation here to Germantown. Unite and celebrate these awesome kids and this amazing community. To end in stating that we're all privileged, I'll quote from Carol Swain, who's an African-American female professor of political science and law at Vanderbilt. America is a true land of opportunity for anyone of color and background. In this country, where you start your life does not determine where you end up. Thank you. Alex Hardy and on deck is Megan Kidsey Ward. Good evening, Alex Harden from uh, Colgate. Uh, so just for everyone who still thinks that the CRT situation is about important pedagogical lenses or easing racial tensions, I'd like to add on to the historical summary that Gary Poindexter and, and others uh, started to lay out tonight. First of all, in, in August of last year, a teacher in service was run uh, in which the attendees were asked to stand up and proclaim or acknowledge their so-called white privilege. 
course, the educational value of such an exercise is uh, fairly mysterious. Uh, and, and then in September to October, as, everyone, as numerous people have mentioned, Brenda O'Brien sent out a number of emails encouraging books to be brought into the classroom outside of standard curriculum. One of these books was called Rethinking Early Childhood Education. This book shows how educators can nurture an ecological consciousness and activism in young children. It encourages teachers, uh, to, it reminds teachers that young children's education is inseparable from social justice. No one here behind me voted for that. I don't know why, why that's even thought of uh, being appropriate in the classroom. Okay. Yeah, what's quite interesting is that the May 24th board meeting one month ago, the board was adamant that, quote, policies were in place to prevent this exact sort of thing. But it, it's happening. So you can, you can see why we're frustrated about this. Everyone knows about the April 26th board meeting where much talk was given about how critical race theory is a pedagogical tool and a lens and a literary framework. Perhaps forgetting about the emails that, that Brenda sent the previous fall or the $3,500 she tried to pay Ubuntu to facilitate social justice training. Okay. At May, again, at the May 24th uh, curriculum meeting, the ACE committee proposed a listening library where books very similar to the ones that Brenda is trying to bring into the school could be backdoored into the classroom outside of the curriculum. And why is this allowed? Again, this is happening. Okay. So everything I've said and everything everyone else has said is extremely well documented. Everyone's read it, everyone's seen it. There's no gray area or differing perspectives here. These are the facts. I'd like to close with a snippet from one more of the books that Brenda O'Brien wants teachers to incorporate into the classroom. This is a book called Pedagogy of Insurrection. You heard me. It's by a well-known uh, Marxist scholar named Peter McLaren. On page 62, he says, I want to underscore the structural violence of capitalist inequality and the necessity of creating a socialist alternative. And if we arrive at a socialist alternative, it will be the result of class struggle. Now, I was mocked heartily two months ago when I highlighted the Marxist roots of this movement. Yet, yet here it is. Okay, so there are exactly three logical ways to respond to all these facts that everyone's been talking about. One, you can be perfectly okay with it. Two, you, you could, could not understand, understand them, them, which I, I, I doubt. No one's, everyone, everyone in here is reasonably, reasonably intelligent, I think. Or three, you, you can, can make, make it stop. stop. We, the, the parents, parents are imploring you to please make it stop. Thank you. Megan and then Monica Curtis. Monica Curtis, you're on deck. Hi, I first want to thank Brenda O'Brien for all the work she has done in the Germantown School District. I worked under Brenda's leadership for 15 years, and she was phenomenal at her job. Um, so thank you, Brenda, for all that you do for this district. I would also urge the board to do everything in your power to find correct sources. Everything that has been said tonight is incorrect. I have a master's degree in education, I have a degree in English, and none of what is said is correct information. It is not what critical race theory is. I have three questions I'd like you guys to think about tonight that I hope you really, really think about and discuss. First question is this, why now? I was a teacher in this district for 15 years. <clears throat> I started teaching here, and the critical race theory, formerly known as the African American theory, was taught in conjunction with all of the critical lens theories. It has been taught in this district for 15 years. I taught most of your children this theory. I, I, I'm just blown away that now this is coming up. Um, and so I really challenge you to think about why now? Why is this such a big deal now? This isn't something taught in isolation to promote racism. This is a lens, and it's a point of view, and it's a, to help kids think and to learn. I also was department chair for 12 years. Every year I was required to write curriculum maps for all of our course programs, and we talked about these theories in every single course. So for us to ban one is going to make all of these courses seem off from what we are supposed to be doing, which is teaching kids how to think. We're not teaching them the way to think, we're teaching them just to think, and they can formulate their own opinions. For 15 years, I have taught 300 kids a year in this district. Um, not once was there an issue. Not once did a kid come forward and say that we had, I had been racist or I had made them to feel bad. Not once. Do the math on how many children that is that have been exposed to this. What's changed is my second question. Four years ago, I co-authored the class Critical Thinking. 
Back then, you all who were here said this is a great course. You said, we love that you're teaching our kids to think. We love that you're bringing our kids forward. Not one of you challenged me when I introduced the critical theories. And that was all of them. Critical race theory was in there at that point. And you never brought anything up to do with that. I would like to tell you, and I wish I could invite all of you into my classroom, the most beautiful discussions I've ever had in my classrooms had to do with critical theories. Not critical race, critical theories. I would sit back and I would watch these kids discuss. They would challenge each other. There was never an agreed upon or a, a dominant opinion. It was a discussion. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, watching these kids formulate their ideas and opinions. And that's what we should be doing in Germantown. Last, I want you to think about what's our legacy. Um, I think that we are at this crossroads here. Are we going to be, leave the legacy of the people who caved? Or are we going to actually move forward and help our kids to develop critical thinking? Today, a bunch of old students reached out to me and they said, Ms. Kitsy, why is this happening? That was one of our favorite units when we learned how to think about other people. Why would they do this? And I couldn't answer because I couldn't understand why we wouldn't teach our kids how to think. I have a son with autism in this district. And the reason I share this is because there's a critical disability theory. I'm not sure if you know about it. Basically, it says, let's look at things from the point of view of someone with disabilities. If, if you were to ban, ban that, that, I'd be devastated. devastated. It would mean my son's opinion or experience doesn't matter. It would mean all the times he gets looked at and mocked and made fun of in public didn't matter. That's what you're doing to our kids of color. So I challenge you to make the legacy of Germantown one where we give all kids a voice and a place in the school. Thank you. Thank you. Monica, <laughs> on deck is Jamie Nielsen. Hi. I'm Monica Curtis. I'm a parent in the community. I live in Germantown. The Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin Health Network embraces our roles as an employer, community member, and corporate citizen. We value and celebrate the wealth of diversity reflected in our patients, their families, our workforce, and the communities we serve. We are committed to being an inclusive and culturally competent organization that provides exceptional care to everyone. This commitment is demonstrated through our nationally recognized Diversity Council, which is led by our CEO and COO to provide a broad oversight on all of our diversity initiatives. Within our health network, diversity and inclusion leverages the individual uniqueness among culture, people, cultures, and systems that collectively empower us to drive innovation and deliver culturally competent care. We fulfill our commitment to, to uh, diversity through efforts that impact our workforce, marketplace, and the community. We also pledge to take action to eliminate health care disparities. Health equity. Committed, committed to eliminating health care disparities and addressing social determinants of health like education, employment, and food insecurity, the freighter and the MCW Health Network provides culturally and linguistically competent health care to all individuals, regardless of race, ethnicity, language preference, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, and any other dimension of diversity. Health equity is fundamental to the, organiz to the organization's mission and simply the right thing to do. Growth. We will support our growth strategy by including yeah, by increasing awareness, building relationships, and meeting the unique healthcare needs of emerging markets, including African American, Black, Asian, Hispanic, Lat Latinx, the LGBTQ plus community, veterans, and people with disabilities, our commitment to end, to help end racism in healthcare. Racism continues to be a threat to in our community. As a healthcare organization, we are committing to helping end racism and racial, racial disparities in healthcare by examining our own biases, evaluating our policies to ensure they meet the needs of everyone we serve, leading change in our community and more. Equity isn't a phase. It's present and essential in many of the next steps we take for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, and on deck we have Jessica Chapin. My name is Jamie Nielsen, and I'm speaking um, as a parent in the community. 
Um, and I'm going to read the Children's Wisconsin Equity Statement. At Children's Wisconsin, we have a long-standing commitment to support all children. We are dedicated to providing the best possible care experience and outcomes for children and families, creating a strong and united workplace, culture, and building a better world so our children can grow up healthy. As a leading pediatric health care system with over 2 million touch points per year with the kids and families, we know how many lives we impact on a daily basis. We take our responsibility to uphold values and standards relating to inclusion, diversity, and equity seriously. We believe these principles are essential to our division, that the kids of Wisconsin will be the healthiest in the nation. That's why we are working together every day to ensure that we are an organization that is listening, learning, and driving positive change. Children's Office of Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity empowers and supports our workforce, the families we serve, and our com community to advance our mission of care, advocacy, research, and education. Our inclusion, diversity, and equity work is guided by the following objectives. Enhance our steadfast commitment to inclusion and health equity for the children and families we serve. Increase the diversity of workforce and leadership with a special focus on un underrepresented populations. Enhance our culture of respect, equity, and inclusion for all aspects of diversity. Provide leadership in the community on topics of diversity, inclusion, and health equity. Central to this work is our commitment to anti-racism. At Children's, we have no tolerance for racism and discrimination. This includes racism within the workplace, within the child and family experience, or in any of our care settings. And I just want to know, if you don't want your children exposed to CRT, equity, diversity, inclusion, um, yet you want them to thrive in the world, um, almost anywhere that they choose to go for a higher education or a place of employment, they will be encountering it. And I have yet to meet a white person who feels shame for being white because they learned the truth. Thank you. Jessica, on deck we have Mark Filo. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Jessica Chapin. I have two kids in the Germantown School District. And I'm still not totally clear what we would be banning our teachers to teach. We can get bogged down by politics, but I'm curious about the practicals. There are wide differences, it sounds like, in our understanding of CRT. So what would we be exactly banning our teachers to teach? What wouldn't they be allowed to incorporate? That all white people are oppressors and all people of color are oppressed? I trust none of our teachers are, would be saying that. Um, that only people of color experience discrimination and all white people have it easy? You know, I trust our teachers wouldn't be saying that. Um, that white people should be mired in guilt? That there is a history of racism in this country and that there is value in considering the effects this may have on the inequalities today? I sure hope we're not banning that. When we look at the current racial disparities in this country, can we really say that the history of racism played no part? And that understanding this may help us move forward together. It's absurd if we can't talk about this very real and relevant history in our schools. I work at Advocate Aurora, and while I'm not here representing that organization, um, I'm proud of the work that Advocate Aurora has done to make real change across the organization and, and the people that we serve. Um, our organization put out a 2020 Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Impact Report, and in it, our president and CEO states that we focused on and will continue to focus on taking tangible action to affect real change by prioritizing health equity to ensure all people have the opportunity to live well, working in our communities to eliminate race-based barriers to healthcare employment. And he goes on to say that we recognize the need to evolve and grow as our world also continues to change. So leading companies in our community see what's happening they have created a culture and are creating a culture around dismantling racism. Our students need to be able to think intelligently about issues of race and racism. We can't limit what they're being taught to only a narrow view, a view with harmful results that the rest of the country is waking up to if not already aware. 
I was recently talking with a family member who I haven't seen for a while, and I mentioned my son is going to be going to Germantown High School in a few years. And she said, totally unprompted, Germantown, there's some racist kids up there. She used to play basketball against us. And we have a reputation, and we need to change that. Thanks. On deck is Kim Grant. Good evening. My name is Mark Filla, and I'm a Germantown resident and have two high school age sons. I would like to share some information on the diversity and equity that one of the largest employers in Milwaukee, Rockwell Automation, has on their website. I am not an employee, nor am I representing Rockwell. I just found this interesting. At Rockwell Automation, we care for and stand with black, indigenous, and all people of color. We condemn racism and discrimination of any kind because they have no place in our communities. Change begins with each of us, and it starts with listening and learning. In these times, some might find it difficult to know the right thing to do or say to be a strong advocate and ally. One of the key different differentiators in our culture where we encourage courageous conversations on inclusion and diversity is in the workplace. The goal is to create stronger workplace partnerships by building understanding of issues that can get in the way of inclusive work environment. These are my words now. On a personal note, I believe we do our community and our students a disservice by publicly advertising ourselves as a place that does not share these values. Families will not want to move here or will move away, and our graduates will not have the tools to operate within a world and corporate culture that is finally starting to embrace diversity instead of running from it. Many recent uh, GHS grads have indicated that this district did not equip them with the tools and, and language needed to navigate the more diverse communities they experienced in college and their careers. And CRT will only exacerbate that problem. I have attended or watched the last several school board meetings. I have yet to hear a cogent argument against critical race theory. Those speaking against it seem to think that if they repeat words like Marxist, socialist, and communist often enough, they can ignore the purpose of CRT. Or worse, they believe that we are somehow doing our students of color a favor by refusing to acknowledge the reasons for the struggle people who look like them have endured. Some Germantown residents recently received a solicitation to sign a petition against CRT. Setting aside for a moment the fact that the word Germantown was misspelled, the bullet points on the petition have nothing to do with CRT. They were only meant to misinform and frighten. I believe opponents of CRT are being played. They are being played by people who need their votes. They are being played by people who need their money. They are scared of a boogeyman that does not exist. The movement against CRT is a solution in need of a problem and accomplishes nothing. Do not vote to ban. Thank you. On deck is Coral Klein. Go ahead, Kim. Hello, I'm Kim Grant. I'm a parent of a Germantown High School senior. Yay. Um, at BMO, we are committed to building more than just a society, especially for our groups facing systemic barriers, including our black, Latino, indigenous colleague, customers, and communities. BMO's Zero Barriers to Inclusion 2025 is a multi-year strategy focused on providing access to opportunities and enabling growth both inside and outside our doors. It is all part of our purpose-driven commitment to boldly grow the good in business and life, one with zero barriers of inclusion. When it comes to our colleagues, we will ensure that an equitable employee experience for all, supporting inclusion and improving access to development and career advancement for colleagues facing systemic barriers. When it comes to our customers, we are expanding financial inclusion for diverse customers through inclusive banking products, servicing, and resources. And we're meeting our customers' needs by addressing their unique expectations and experiences. When it comes to our communities, we will be leaders in increasing inclusion in our communities, building strong relationships to foster racial justice and truth and reconciliation, and promoting inclusive local and economic opportunities. Now, these are my words. This is not about CRT. But I personally demand that American history be taught correctly and with the brutal honesty that this country was built on. I demand that African American history will be added as its own course, Native American history added as its own course, and African American poetry to be taught so everybody will understand 
why the caged bird sings. I will also want to understand that even with all of this division, in the words of Maya Angelou, leaving behind the nights of our terrors and fears, I rise. Into the daybreak that wondrously clears, I rise. Bringing the gifts of my ancestors gave, I rise. And the dream and the hope of all of the slaves, me, my son, and everybody in this room, we still can rise. Coral, and on deck we have Dana Obenauer. Good evening. My name is Coral Klein. I'm the parent of three children who attend the district. Um, I'm here tonight to stress the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion within the Germantown School District. Our community is years behind in the need to embrace equity work. Um, tonight I'm presenting to you the DEI statement from FIS, a global banking and investment firm. FIS has a very contemporary and global view on inclusion and diversity. We believe diversity encompasses all the differences that make people unique. It's these differences that inform the way each of us interpret and negotiate the world and how each of us thinks and approaches problems. Inclusion, on the other hand, is about creating the right environment to unlock the power of diversity. When we think of inclusion at FIS, we think of behaviors that signal that, that diversity is welcome and that no one is to be discounted or diminished because of their differences. It's about fairness, equal opportunity, respect, and trust. Inclusion is embedded in FIS's core values and in our views on corporate responsibility. At FIS, we believe fostering and cultivating an inclusive and diverse workforce is the responsibility of all our employees. This commitment starts at the very top of our organization and with our most senior leaders. From our CEO, Chairman, and President, Gary Norcross, who is the signatory of the CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion, to our Chief, Chief People Officer, Denise Williams, who speaks out on the importance of diversity in our industries, our senior leaders are united in championing inclusion and diversity within our workplace, our marketplace, and within our local communities. Under the guidance of our Global Director of Inclusion and Diversity, we achieve this through systematic and consistent consideration of equality and diversity within FIS planning, including, but not limited to, our hiring, promotion, transfer, engagement, and retention efforts. We regularly review our metrics on the demographics and experiences of our colleagues with respect to these efforts and report them to our senior leadership and board on an ongoing basis. We further use this information to inform, refine, and drive our inclusion and diversity programs and initiatives to attract, develop, and retain an inclusive and diverse workforce. I would like to ask this board, what will companies like FIS think when they see a Germantown graduate on a resume? Anything less than an embracement of diversity, equity, and inclusion makes our children less competitive upon graduation into a diverse world. In addition, our ability to retain and attract top educators and for us to have an inclusive and diverse workforce here in the district will be absolutely non-existent if we do not take action now. Thank you. Becca Perkins is on deck. Hi, good evening. My name is Dana Obenauer. I'm a mother and a coach in the community. I live in Colgate. Um, I have a middle schooler and a grade school daughter. Um, I'm not an employee at Molson Coors, but I'm going to read their statement on equity. Um, at Molson Coors, we believe diversity, equity, and inclusion should be embedded deeply in our culture and how we operate, from how we work together to how we grow as a company. We know that when we support diversity from within our company, we find new ways of working and bright ideas. We aim to foster a diverse workforce that reflects the rich diversity of our consumers, customers, and communities where we do business. In 2020, we created a 2021-2023 DEI roadmap for our North America business unit, informed by an assessment of our existing culture, programs, and talent management process. Using this feedback, we set a series of commitments to target our efforts towards 2023. Our DEI commitments include 
By 2023, increased people of color representation in the U.S. by 25%. By 2023, achieve one billion of spend with diverse suppliers in North America. And by 2023, improve representation of women on an enterprise-wide level. Um, they also have a Safe Spaces initiative. And as we strive to create a brighter future for our employees and the people in the communities where we live and work, Molson Curves is dedicated to listening, reflecting, and taking action to be part of a meaningful change. With our focus on creating a culture where everyone feels appreciated, respected, and valued, we have rolled out our Safe Spaces initiative. Safe Spaces gives our people the opportunity to individually acknowledge their commitment to ensuring Molson Course is a place where everyone feels confident that they will not be exposed to discrimination or harassment. This initiative is one of many steps Molson Course is taking to make influential shifts to our culture. Um, they, um, I guess I grew up in a community smaller than Germantown, and I was 40 years old when I learned about the Tulsa Race Massacre. And as an adult, I feel that's really not acceptable. And when we moved and became citizens and taxpayers in the Germantown community, I wanted something better for my kids. I wanted them to learn something that was inclusive for everybody. And for them to have, you know, no, I guess more than I did growing up. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Is Melissa Garvey's. Thank you. Sorry. My, My name is Becca Perkins. I'm a parent to two students here in Germantown, and I'm here as an advocate for equity work that so desperately needs your attention in this district. In this regard, I'd like to share the experience of Marquette University as I see some parallels here. Grounded in the Catholic mission, Marquette University's vision is to create a diverse and vibrant campus community in which all enjoy mutual respect. However, there have been significant challenges along the way to achieving that vision. As the 2015 climate study indicated, one out of every five members of the Marquette family experienced marginalization, disconnection, and alienation on the campus. And one in three reported that they had observed such acts of bias. Since the release of the climate study, Marquette has taken steps towards becoming a more inclusive campus. Yet they, like us at Germantown School District, are at a critical crossroads. A moment as Father Arturo Sosa states, we need to reignite a sense of urgency in actively working to transform the campus environment. He goes on to say in his 2018 speech, educating people for world citizenship involves recognizing diversity as the constitutive dimension of a full human life. This means experiencing cultural diversity as an opportunity for the enrichment of human beings. We want to educate human beings who are able to feel that they are members of humanity because they have become critically aware of their, of their own culture, culture enculturation, enculturation, who are capable of joyfully recognizing the culture of other human beings, multiculturalism, and relating to others, becoming enhanced by the variety of which their own culture is a part, interculturality. Interpreted in this way, education can provide the impetus for social justice, fraternity, and peace. Later he goes on to say that diversity, that researchers have found that learning is strengthened by diverse environments. Diversity is an asset to the learning environment. It expands our worldview, helps us become more receptive and empathetic to others, drives innovation, helps us to become more effective problem solvers, and ultimately prepares us to become better servant leaders in the community. And the uh, recommendations for children's books isn't CRT. It's a window into what the world is actually like outside of Germantown. And I feel that Marquette took the time to listen to their students. I've sat here, you've heard the stories of Germantown students. And I urge you as a board to listen to those kids who are telling you that they feel marginalized here in Germantown. It's time that we start putting equity work on the forefront because you are ages behind other districts. I'm sure you're aware of that, but if not, you're welcome to look out to the work being done in Greendale, Greenfield, Wauwatosa, Brown Deer, Shorewood, or Mequon, who all have equity um, policies. This isn't about an image, it's about doing what's best on behalf of our students and I, I urge you to do that tonight. tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Magdalia Prop is on deck. Hello, my name is Melissa Garvis and I'm a parent of two elementary students in the community. I would like to share the equity statements of Adtel and Global Education. They say, 
We believe in equality and social justice. Agile and our family of organizations are united in our stance of being an anti-racist organization. One that stands for equality and social justice and against violence, hate, and supremacy of any kind. This commitment isn't just words we say, it's reflected in the actions we take. We are committed to championing diversity and inclusion. We do this by ensuring we have diverse representation at every level of our organization, cultivating leaders who are committed to creating a sense of engagement and belonging, and embedding our values into programs and policies that assures our culture and our community embrace equality for all. We believe in an inclusive culture and support the LGBTQ community. Agile supports a culture where colleagues can bring their full authentic selves to work and is inclusive regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. Not only does the organization support the LGBT community, it provides healthcare benefits to same-sex life partners of employees, medical coverage for gender reassignment surgery, and benefits for adoption by same-sex partners. Your family is our family, and we want to help you provide for them. We believe in empowering women and the advancement of gender diversity. Our Ed Network, which stands for Empowerment, Diversity, Growth, and Excellence, supports the enhanced career experience and advancement of women in the workplace. It's one of our most vibrant internal programs, promoting professional development and diversity, with 23 chapters globally. I'm curious, are the employees of Atalem showing up to work with angry propaganda-fueled rants of Marxism and communism demanding these policies be reversed? You wonder why not? Perhaps proudly waving your flag of willful ignorance at work is not a good resume builder. If you proceed with banning education, how are we preparing students to work at companies like Ed Palum? They're expecting cultural competency from every single one of our graduates. Anything less than an enthusiastic embracement of diversity, equity, and inclusion in our district makes our graduates less competitive and less prepared. Julia Kranz is on deck. My name is Mike Mikowski, and I'm the mother of four children in our district, also a Germantown alum. I would like to start out by pointing out that I've also attended all of the board meetings since April. And out of all of the, out of respect to the board, we have chosen not to speak on CRT or flood public comments because it wasn't on the agenda. As far as the cameras are concerned, I called them. Because tonight, the school board will make history one way or another. Many of you recognize the diversity, equity, and inclusion statements that we read earlier tonight. The people in this room employed by those companies may have even signed something saying with that something with their employers saying that they've agreed to partner in those commitments as a condition of their employment. I'm curious, are you also fighting with your employers? I wonder why not. The points made tonight by so many are simple. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are not policies that major area employers and universities believe are policies that they believe in, continue to grow in, and invest in. Not following their example makes our diplomas less valuable. You may decide tonight to ban to vote CRT. Before you vote, I'll remind you of a few things. This board, which included several of you, voted for the curriculum that CRT lies within many years ago. There has never been a single complaint about that content until now. There still isn't a complaint about the content, just complaints from parents. Um, the same board blindly voted to ban CRT without following policy, and then a few short weeks later rescinded that ban. What new education, training, or knowledge have you acquired since then to make a more informed decision tonight? Why hasn't that information been, um, that you're using to define CRT been shared publicly? And why are the partisan policies of some board members more important than the needs of our students? I'll also remind you that CRT is only one of the critical theories approved by the board and implemented in this district. If you choose to ban CRT and not ban all critical theories, you are violating our civil rights. 
Seeing as the other critical theories are not on the agenda tonight, we are all well informed that they cannot be voted on. If the decision is made to ban CRT tonight, we will not scream, we won't shut out. We won't yell at the board and we won't throw a tantrum as we have seen happen in this room several times over the past few months. Instead, if you ban CRT tonight, we will hold you accountable for violating our civil rights. Krista, you were designed deck. I'm here before you once again because critical race theory is on the line once again. I won't stand here and re-explain what critical race theory is. I've been there and I've done that. At this point, whatever you don't know or refuse to acknowledge is on you. Ignorance is bliss, and you can't see what you choose to close your eyes to. Watching these board meetings is both comedic and appalling. The bias, misinformation, and microaggressions baffle me. How many people have stood up here and openly acknowledged that they're self-educated on this subject within the last few weeks? How many people have come up here to quote the same Hillsdale College article without questioning its reliability, bias, or the author's dead-end credentials? Right now, the threat against this community isn't Marxism, it's ourselves. But no matter how bad it gets, and no matter what people say, no matter what political agendas people push, it's 2021. You can try and ban critical race theory, but you'll never ban the truth. Whether you vote in the summer or in a year from now when we graduate, there will always be students who stand up for what they believe in. Look around you. What side are the students sitting on? Empathy, progression, and the hope to be better will blossom with or without your support. Students have time and time again shown that, shown that to be true. It's not a matter of if, but when. And for the sake of our community, schools, and students, don't block our learning because they are scared. No. Not to say names. I'm not saying names. Um, but somebody um, sent an email around talking about how they plan on banning CRT tonight, like regardless of anything. And last time when I spoke, he was eating M&Ms and drinking. So just to be perfectly clear, critical race theory is not an attack on white people. We exist in a society that is built on inherently racist ideas and institutions. It's not calling you racist, it's just talking about America's past. Are you gonna deny that America has a racist past? Because that's a whole nother problem. Acknowledging those roots and learning from them isn't an attack on you, it's an attack on racism. Don't let your misunderstandings and discomfort interfere with our education. We aren't responsible for the past, but we are accountable for the future. Gail Trapp is on deck. Thank you. At what point did Germantown School District focus become equity? Equity is a critical race theory term. According to Christopher Rufo, director of the Initiative of Critical Race Theory at the Manhattan Institute, there are a series of terms deployed by its supporters to describe critical race theory, including equity, social justice, diversity and inclusion, and culturally responsive teaching. Critical race theorists, masters of language construction, realized that neo-Marxists would be a hard sell. Critical race theory is an ideology started in academia in the 70s that says racism exists everywhere, in every person and system. And the job of the critical theorist is to assess how, not if, racism occurred in any circumstance. Racism is always assumed to have occurred. Our Director of Teaching and Learning, Brenda O'Brien, is the chair of the ACE Committee. Superintendent Straussland is the chair of the Student Advocacy Subcommittee. Based on Christopher Rufo's explanation, both the superintendent and the director of teaching and learning, knowingly or not, are supporters of critical race theory, but they deny that it's being implemented in our school. 
Further, in a draft, in a draft admission statement for the ACE committee, one of the points under the equity commitment heading is we will implement culturally responsive teaching and leadership practices that reflect contributions and perspectives of all people. So what is critically or culturally responsive teaching and learning? I went to the DPI website. For those of you who don't know, DPI is the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. I went to the DPI website hoping to find that culturally responsive teaching embraced and celebrated culture and promoted unity. But when I looked up culturally responsive teaching, one of the first training pages took me to a link on microaggressions. Now to understand microaggressions, you must first understand, per this PowerPoint, unearned privilege and power and marginalization. It explained unearned privilege is privilege based on some aspect of your identity that you are born with. The next slide titled Privilege in Context had a link to a TED Talk presented by Peggy McIntosh, where she explained that as a white woman, she had white privilege and power over her colored co-workers, and how white men, simply based on the color of their skin and their sex, have power and privilege over all women. Time. Thank you. To summarize, is this what we want to teach our kids? Do we want them taught that just because of the color of their skin and their sex, that they are oppressive or oppressed? We need these kids to feel like they can do anything they want in life. Thank you. On deck is Bag Cuts. I have recently heard that the federal government obviously has proposed to prior prioritize funding educational programs that promote critical race theory, equity, and the 1619 project, and I say absolutely no to all that federal funding. We all know that critical race theory is definitely a Marxist ideology. It causes division and it causes segregation. But I'm also very suspicious about equity, social justice, or whatever catchphrase that's being used in the curriculum. I also see very red flags. Schools in Wisconsin are also implementing um, equity because it, they look at the equal outcome curriculum and canceling AP classes. So is that another dumbing down project for our kids? So what exactly does equity look like in a curriculum and what is the outcome that you're looking for? Because equity is not equality. Equity also focuses on being a gender neutral so does that mean that we're going to have boys in our girls' locker rooms and in their bathrooms in the future? Because it's happening. Are we going to start teaching our first graders about sexual education and how to please themselves? Because they are in Illinois, so don't say that it doesn't happen. Teachers that do these kind of things, they should be locked up. I personally consider that a pedophile. If somebody's going to teach a first grader that type of a curriculum underneath of the disguise that it's equity. So I ask parents and grandparents, what are you willing to do to protect your children? Because CRT, Equity, and the 1619 Project are all a very political movement, and they are all joined at the hip. These are identity politics that take a, make a mockery of equality with special privilege on the basis of racial and sexual identity. The 1619 Project tells students that America was fought, had fought the Revolutionary War to prever, preserve slavery. It states that the Atlantic slave trade was the dominant factor in the founding of America instead of ideals such as individual liberty and the natural rights. Historians and political scientists have call, been calling it a bid to rewrite the U.S. history. Our government stated that a man called Ibram Kendi was an example that we should be looking at. This, this is, is the man, man that, that says, discrimination now, discrimination tomorrow, and discrimination forever. That's, that's who we're, we're supposed to base it on. That's, that's how they want to use our tax dollars. And do, they don't even mention Martin Luther King or Frederick Douglass. Let's, Let's look, look at, at teaching US, U.S. history again. Declaration, Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, Constitution Federalist Papers, Papers, Bill of Rights. The first Lincoln-Douglas debate would be a great one. one. What about Justice Clarence Thomas? Parents are 
waking up to what teachers and staff are pushing on the kids. And my suggestion to the teachers that want to teach Marxist ideology need to go visit Venezuela or Cuba and see how well Marxism is working there. Candace Bright, you're on deck. I'm going to read something because I really don't like speaking in front of people, so I'm very uncomfortable. Um, I can't speak to um, what it's like to be discriminated against because I, it just hasn't really happened other than women's stuff. So I'm going to read something by Carol Swain. She's an African-American female professor of political science and law at Vanderbilt. And it's titled, What I Can Teach You About Racism. Let me tell you how my story ends. I become a tenured award-winning professor of political science at an Ivy League university and that one of, then at one of the leading universities in the South. Now let me tell you how my story begins. I grew up in rural Virginia, literally dirt poor. I drop out of school in the eighth grade and have three children by the time I'm 20. I consider myself to be a reasonably modest person, but even I have to admit that's quite a journey. How did I do it? I worked hard. Not crazy, 24-7 hard, just hard. I made good decisions, not brilliant three-dimensional chess decisions, just good ones. I met people along the way who helped me and sincerely wanted to see me succeed, not because they had something to gain, but because they were decent people. But mostly I think I was blessed in one crucial way. I was born in America, a true land of opportunity for anyone of color or background. In this country, where you start your life does not determine where you end up. That works in both directions. You can start out with every advantage and waste them all, or you can start out with nothing and become a success. It depends on you. Your attitude is more important than your race, gender, or social class in determining what you will accomplish in life. When I hear talk about systemic racism, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I want to laugh because it's such nonsense. I want to cry because I know it's pushing untold numbers of young blacks into a dead end of self-pity and despair. Instead of seizing the amazing opportunities America offers them, they seize an excuse to explain why they're not succeeding. I was born into a world where systemic racism was real. No fooling, outright bigotry, back of the bus real. But here's what you need to know. Yes, that racism shaped the black experience, but even then it did not define it. Change was in the air. Call it systemic reform. I was fortunate in another way. I was spared the life-sapping negative messages about America that are crippling a generation of young people. These ideas are poison. White privilege, whiteness as a form of property, unconscious racism, reparations, microaggressions, police have it out for blacks, that the United States was created to protect and promote slavery. These are the ideas young people are told they must accept, and then they're told to reject the ideas that can save them, the antidote the success principles that enabled me and millions of other Americans to escape lives of poverty. These principles aren't complicated. Work hard, learn from your mistakes, take personal responsibilities for your actions. When I made the decisions to get my high school equivalency, attend a community college, and then earn four additional college and university degrees, I believed that my education would open doors, and it did. It was only when exposed to academic theories of oppression in Thank graduate you. school, I was informed because I was black, poor, and female, I could never do what I had already accomplished. Thank God it was too late for these toxic messages to stop me. Don't let them stop our future, gener future generations. Vote to ban CRT and discriminatory teaching. Lisa Pila, you're on deck. Candace Wright, German, er, Colgate, Wisconsin. I am a seven-year Germantown resident. This is indeed my first school board meeting because of many reasons. One, because I recently only sent my children to the Germantown School District because of the pandemic. Two, because just like many of you, I didn't want to expose my children unnecessarily to a school system where people did not value their story. Three, because I previously felt that diversity in Germantown was a lost cause. So it's not the cameras that has brought me here, it's actually the elephant in the Germantown School District that brought me here. How many of you know what Juneteenth was before Friday? How many of you know now? Let it marinate, because you don't. Critical race theory. Examine social and cultural and legal issues as they relate to racism. Understanding cultural and legal issues related to race and racism is a critical element of understanding American history. 
If you are outraged by the possible teaching of critical race theory, then you should be darn near dead at the thought of teaching American history. Whose story isn't being told? The students affected by the cultural and legal issues related to race. The students who are being fed the washed version of American history. If politics don't belong in schools, remove history of any sort then and focus on what I heard referred to tonight as the critical subjects, math, reading, and writing, make the students of Germantown really unprepared for the diverse world ahead of them. On an ending note, the Germantown School District has long voted critical race theory down and diversity without saying one word. On the third January of each month, a federal holiday where post offices and banks are closed. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, you have school. And on that following two Friday, you have a teacher in service where there is no school. So you see, Germantown School Board and community members, critical race theory isn't the only issue being, dis the only issue being discussed here, but it is definitely not the first thing that has been done to students of color to let them know that their truth doesn't matter. Naomi Top, you're on deck. Good evening. Uh, my name is Lisa Phila. I am reading this on behalf of my son, um, who was at work earlier. So, um, although I am no longer a student of the Germantown School District and now attend the University School of Milwaukee, my nine years attending both MacArthur Elementary School and Kennedy Middle School sufficed in opening me to the cruelty that has been displayed by students in the halls. From the N-word being used without thought to other offensive phrases and off-mark comments and gestures used to describe or talk about people of color. I didn't quite understand how horrible these conditions were until I transferred. Originally, I was looking for a more challenging curriculum that I felt Germantown could not offer, but after attending USM for two years now, I see beyond that and notice how hateful the community was. I feel that USM has done a great job creating diversity as well as an understanding of these problems among its white population within the school, and that starts with education. USM is far from perfect, but they are devoted to educating their students on these topics and moving forward and not backward like Germantown. Just because you would like to hide these things doesn't mean they didn't happen and still don't happen today. Being able to ignore these issues is a privilege, but not everyone is lucky enough to be able to do so. Thank you. Chad Matson, you're on deck. My name is Naomi Top, and I am a ger I'm going to be a junior at Germantown High School. I've grown up in Germantown, but feel as if Germantown hasn't grown up with me. As the world around us evolves, Germantown has been closed off to any changes outside the box. Being a student of color in the Germantown School District can be frightening. In your eyes, I may appear full white, and sadly that is what saves me from racial discrimination. Ethnically, I am proudly half white and half Asian Pacific Islander. In a typical day at school, it's common to hear racial slurs, racial stereotype-based comments, and witness situations that would make many people uncomfortable. I've heard fellow students say, go back to where you came from, so freely even though many students of color in our district were born in the United States. There have been multiple instances where students have not come to school in fear of their safety. My classmates should not come home crying or have their education jeopardized because there is no accountability for those cruel actions. For this reason, it is crucial to acknowledge history the way it occurred. It would be easy to say we have a perfect society in past, but that is dangerous as history repeats itself. In no way does critical race theory state white people are bad, nor does it blame the past on every white person. Critical race theory simply teaches the truth so that we can better understand history and how it affects individual behavior and how it affects the way we live today. Why shouldn't my education include how to think critically about reading, writing, math, and all aspects of history? We can change our education by opening it up to, to new deeper concepts so that everyone has a chance to learn about their history. Critical race theory allows us to become more culturally sensitive and in time a more welcoming, safe environment. Members of the Germantown School Board, you need to understand your vote to keep CRT in the curriculum and have such a positive and lasting impact for future Germantown students. It is time to move forward. Vote no to banning CRT. Thank you.
Gene Mary, you're on deck. Hello, my name is Chad Madsen. Um, I have two kids in the district. I've been here for almost 10 years. Um, I want to start off for the people who claim to be colorblind. I am a white man. I do have white children. I don't want them to be taught to hate themselves, and that's not what CRT does. And what I've seen here is a lot of conflation between CRT and DEI. And it seems more, more than likely that um, the people who are against CRT actually want to ban DEI. That's scary. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, which we have heard from a number of speakers, is so very important in our culture, in our world, where we work. DEI is in the forefront of every single major corporation in this country. If we are not providing those tools to our students, our students will fail. Now, I want to just take a second to talk about CRT because that's what's on the agenda. CRT is a single lens, of multiple lenses. And what I'm hearing behind here are the greatest hits of all the uh, far-right uh, funded groups like the McIver Institute, like the Heritage Foundation, uh, probably little Tucker Carlson sprinkled in. This is frustrating. These are lies. This is not what CRT is. But again, most of these people aren't even talking about CRT. They're talking about DEI. Now I remember, I spoke at a previous board meeting where the people who are quiet and told us we shouldn't yell out were yelling out at me. They told me it is their decision what their children learn, what their children do in school. Why is it your right to tell me what my children get to learn in school? Especially since CRT is leaning in two courses, advanced courses at that. So it's definitively a choice to put your children in those classes. I'm gonna finish up here by saying that one board member has outright, in writing, stated that progressives hate America. I want you to look out here. There's a lot of people here who would, who would, who would call themselves progressive. This community is changing. We don't hate America. We believe it can be better. None of us hate America. We have a board member here tonight who said, this is already predetermined. If that's the case, you're violating your oath. We have a board member here who outright claims in writing his political affiliation. That again is in violation of what you're supposed to do for all of the students in this district. Please, please do what's best for all the students in this district. Do not ban CRT. Thank you. Mary, German tongue. I'd like to again follow up on the suggestion that I made two weeks ago to use classroom methodology that teaches children to appreciate differences rather than the CRT method of labeling, categorizing, categorizing, and denigrating. As an example, I had the chance to go to a little award presentation for our Eastern European grandson. The sixth grade teacher, clearly Asian, had decorated her desk area with Japanese pictures and artifacts. I looked around the room and saw a few children of different ethnic backgrounds. After getting his award, she asked Damien to talk about his background. He told the class about his family living in Germany, visiting his mother's parents in Bulgaria, and their move to the United States. Then the teacher asked if anyone had questions. Hands shot up, shot up all over the room. They wanted to hear him speak German and Bulgarian, and to see their names written using the Cyrillic alphabet. The teacher allowed the enthusiasm to run up to the bell for lunch. This is the methodology for teaching children about differences, appreciation, not CRT judgment. We live in a global society, and how will our children deal with differences among people in the future if the approach they are learning now is based on judging, categorizing, and demeaning? Someday many of them will find themselves in other countries, facing every conceivable mixture of people and backgrounds. And how will they find the means to even cope, let alone to engage or appreciate or enjoy? My mother always said it would be a dull world if we were all alike, and that perspective has given me the ability to travel the world 
enjoying and learning from an amazing array of people, their customs, their cultures, their politics, their religions, without any preconceived notions of superiority or inferiority. Today's children deserve the opportunity to have that same view of the world and its people. Don't employ a CRT classroom methodology that teaches them to judge, dismiss, or even hate others based on predefined differences. Thank you. Diane Peterson. And on deck we have Jordan Ely. Peterson Richfield. This seems to be a time of waiting, waiting for your decision tonight on item 6, 7, and 8, and to hear if Wisconsin legislators are going to ban CRT in Wisconsin. Uh, the Ad Hoc Committee put forth a list of curriculum authors earlier. Have you reached those, researched those authors? It took me less than a half an hour to learn that Lucy Hawkins drew fire from experts. Educators, policymakers, and parents have begun turning away from her materials. The Arkansas Division of Education announced back in October 2019, mind you, that any curriculum that utilizes queuing strategies won't be approved for the use in the state, meaning that Hawkins Materials and another one on the list, Fountas and Pinnell, on the ad hoc are effectively banned. I realize that is uh, reading, you're talking about writing tonight, but still, I would be cautious about any of her writings. Your decision on CRT is critical as it will tell all of us your bias and political position. No Republican would support this anti-American ideology. CRT and its nuances are pushed by the Democrat Party. WisconsinPolitics.com had a headline from earlier this year. Governor Tony Evers today announced 30 appointments to the Governor's Advisory Council on Equity and Inclusion. The first meeting was in February 19th, as I previously mentioned a couple of meetings ago. Your ACE committee has the same name, Advisory Council on Equity. Perhaps you were not aware at that time that the committee was formed. I do not know what your knowledge was at the time. But you have let the Democrat Party have a board-sanctioned committee in your school. ACE needs to be disbanded as soon as possible, or you'll be personally li labeled as a liberal Democrat. Hopefully Republicans, legislators, pass a bill to ban CRT from all institutions in Wisconsin. If Wisconsin's liberal governor vetoes the bill, it'll show he doesn't care about our children. Tonight you have many decisions to make. One is about the resource officer. Are you saying that you're following the idea of defund the police? You have 13 positions, social workers, sociologists, counselors, and scheduler. Maybe you could take some hours away from those 13 positions. Lastly, let me make one um, positive comment here about COVID. Parents had to become teachers at home, and they learned about CRT and other things were being taught. Nationwide parents are outraged and fighting back. Without COVID, so much of this would not have been transparent. And are you aware that Mequon is recalling four of their school board members? Thank you. Lee Nealon is on deck. Good evening. My name is Jordan Ely, and I'm a teacher uh, here at the high school, and I'm also a parent in the district. I'm here tonight um, pretty much just to remind us that this is a school where children are encouraged to learn things. And it doesn't count as learning if we're just reinforcing ideas that they already know. We've heard from both sides tonight about critical race theory, and both sides should have an opportunity to have their information presented in our schools. But to ban critical race theory, this allows us that opportunity. And how can we call ourselves a school if we deny our students an opportunity to do the very thing we exist to provide? In terms of teaching critical race theory, I think there are some things that need to be cleared up. But generally, it's this idea of offering students different perspectives. I can learn, I'm sorry, I can read Harry Potter without becoming a wizard. I can learn about serial killers without becoming one. 
and I can learn about Judaism and Islam without adopting a new religion. I can learn about all sides and all different things in a classroom without adopting any of their policies or ideologies that everyone is so terrified about. And speaking of, I assure you, in terms of those who are arguing about indoctrination, that if I had the kind of power to indoctrinate our students, none of them would ever misuse an apostrophe, and they would all spell Germantown correctly on their flyers. Raquel Martin is on deck. Lee, is Lee here? Lee Beelin? Okay. Raquel, Raquel Martin? Martin? We'll have Brad Sherrick on deck. Good evening. I come, I haven't lived in Germantown for very long, uh, but I have lived all over the, the Midwest. I've worked for the military, the private sector, small company, and a big company. Yes, everybody at all these businesses that hire students want diversity and inclusion. It is an extremely important part of, of your career. You have to treat everybody with respect and dignity no matter where you are, no matter where they come from. And you have to acknowledge and tell people, you know, give them the respect that they have a different story and they have a different background. So let me tell you this. I do have a, a small son. And he, uh, when he was about four years old, um, I took him to the store to pick out a baby doll. They say if sons have a doll, they learn compassion and gentleness for when they become fathers someday. Uh, so I took him to the store and I said, you know, pick out any baby you would like. And I stepped back and he walked the shelves and there was a white baby and there was a black baby. He, he's white because, I mean, obviously my skin color is white. He picked the black baby and I said, okay. I, I took him, I paid for the baby doll, and he treats it like it's his best, you know, it's his baby. He changes its diaper, he puts clothes on, he treats compassion. And that showed me such a key lesson that I don't think anybody talks about. Small kids, kindergarten, first grade, their minds are so open. They can't, they don't have the ability yet to think for themselves because they're just developing their brains. He doesn't see color. He doesn't see race. He treats the baby with compassion because it's another person. He doesn't see that he, it's different from him or he should be treated differently than this baby. He took care of that baby and fed the baby just like it, it was a white baby. It didn't matter. So in order to get rid of the racism and all of this, you know, derogatory terms in school, you know, I've been in high school, and yes, I've heard those terms too, and it's awful, but the critical race theory, if you really look into the basis of it, it's pretty awful. So are we talking about critical race theory, or are we talking about diversity and inclusion? Because it seems like there's two different sides here tonight, and they're talking about two different things. I think we need to look at what's critical race theory, What's the background and what did they come up with, you know, in Europe 50 years ago or when they came up with critical race theory? Let's talk about critical race theory, diversity, inclusion, yes, everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. On deck is Jeannie Hetzel. Good evening, Brad Sherrick, Germantown, uh, parent in the district. Um, just before I start, I wanted to make a, a comment about one of the things you heard earlier. I think it's an example of the easily debunked gaslighting that you're getting from one of the groups. Um, the state of Illinois did pass a bill regarding uh, sex education K through 12. And a search that took me 10 seconds told me that 
in, in the K-2 to two age group, that, that training, training would, would focus on personal safety and what it means to be a good friend. In the um, third through fifth age group, it would focus on healthy relationships and how the students change physically, socially, and emotionally. They're not learning how to please themselves in first grade. Um, so I was on the fence about speaking tonight. Um, not really my comfort zone, um, but I do like camera. Um, but when I saw the email from one of the board members to another community member last night, it troubled me. Um, I won't name names, but he was the only one up there clapping for certain speakers earlier. Um, in the email, he said, I quote, I will ban CRT in the Germantown school system tomorrow. He went on to add that the school board would allow CRT to be taught in one AP class, and then a quote, you can thank me for that. Um, I find that disturbing on a number of levels. It's exceptionally close-minded, and it is extremely condescending. The bigger issue to me, however, is what comes after you might ban CRT? What comes next? Our state GOP leaders are showing us what comes next. Their state bill to ban CRT in the school systems doesn't even mention CRT. It bans, among other things, the teaching of anything that causes an individual to, quote, feel discomfort, guilt, anguish, or any other form of psychological distress because of the individual's race or sex. Designing a curriculum around our most fragile parent is a disservice to the rest of us. I implore you not to cave to not a large, silent group, but a vocal, small group. We need to be better than falling victim to manufactured outrage. Don't flip-flop on this issue. Thank you. On deck is Kim Hagenbotham. I'm Jenny Hetzel. Um, so many thoughts here. Uh, Brenda O'Brien said, whose side isn't being taught? And my daughter came home with a Black Lives Matter article. It's personal to me. My brother's a police officer who was shot by a man resisting arrest. There are two sides. When people resist arrest, bad things happen. And police officers' sides not being taught frequently. I am conservative. I don't think I should be shamed for that. We can have two different viewpoints. We can disagree on everything and still be kind to each other. And critical race theory is dividing us. And where I work, it's a national company. We don't have a mission statement with you know, equity rooted in it. But our employer, my employers, people I work with, we just treat everyone the same. We treat everyone with kindness and with a high moral standard. We don't need to take time away from what we're doing to be sidetracked. Our math and reading scores in this district are low, and we're taking time away from the fundamentals of the academics to nitpick all these things. Racial issues are an issue. We need to be teaching kindness, how to love each other, and there needs to be accountability. I've seen across the board lack of accountability. I've seen principals rush issues under the rug. They have little talks with the students and send them back to class. There are no real consequences. My daughter was punched in the face. Didn't tell me about it until summer and said that I was in the principal's office and I, because she's not a behavior problem, said, oh, why? Because you did something good. She goes, no, I got punched in the face and the kid had to apologize to me. There was no phone call to me. She was punched in the face and he had to apologize and that was it. That's not holding students accountable. When you don't hold them accountable, bad behaviors just aren't kept in check. And then middle school comes and high school comes and the behaviors get worse. I can't control my tax dollars going to these in-services I don't agree with. I can't control my tax dollars going to a director of equity. I can't choose my children's teachers, and I'm disappointed in all of this. Because across the board, we all have our political views. They are different, and that's fine. But when my children are coming home with only the left side being taught the majority of the time, and like one parent said, with the virtual teaching, that became apparent. Well, one of the teachers said, for 15 years this has been taught. Clearly, there was no transparency. I didn't know about it until this year. So our curriculum needs to be available to everyone to look at. Um, now that it's made clear that this is being taught, I'm not happy with it. I wouldn't have been happy with it 15 years ago. I wouldn't have been happy with it five years ago. I'm not happy with it today. 
if you're, you're putting, putting right conservative mentality into the children, you're going to have the left side unhappy. You're putting the left side, you have the right side unhappy. Let's leave it out of it. Let's teach our kids to be kind to each other. Like somebody said, let's celebrate the cultural diversity that we all can bring to the table. Please ban CRT. Can't the last time on my list. Nice. nice. All right. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to concede 30 seconds of my time with Alex, and then I'll finish up. So if, if, you, have, if you have the facts, palm the facts. If you have the law, palm the law. If you have neither, I guess just blackmail and cancel your opponents. I hope you guys on the board see what's going on tonight. The first number of speakers from, from the opposing side, my, you know, opposition to me, read through the equity statements of the employers of many of the people standing behind me, and a number of people on this board. And then threatening comments were made about that. that that's, that's bullying, that's threatening, that's intimidation. Brian, per your, your comments at the beginning of this period, that has no place here. And I hope something's done about it. Thank you. this a little bit, but in a proposed rule on April 19th, the Biden administration's education department laid out plans to strongly encourage, if not require, federally funded American history and civics education programs to focus on the consequences of slavery and the ongoing national reckoning with systemic racism. The program would incorporate anti-racist practices into teaching and learning. There could be legal problems, however, the use of highly charged and stylized code words like equity, systemic racism, and anti-racism make clear that this is far more than a plan to teach American history's flaws and all. On the contrary, the administration seeks to entrench a comprehensive, almost ontological historical view, often referred to as critical race theory. According to the department's rulemaking notice, grant-funded teachers must emphasize racial identities and create an identity-safe learning environment. Teachers also must teach the tenets of critical race theory, systemic racism, biases, inequities, and discriminatory policy and practice in American history. Teachers will also be required to emphasize equity as a solution. Here's where the legal problems begin. By incorporating these ideas into a federally funded grant program, the administration sends a clear message. America is not a country that has struggled to overcome racism, but one that itself remains deeply racist. The term equity, as used in a critical race theory, is very different than the equality America was founded on and has admittedly struggled to achieve. For decades, school children have studied the Declaration of Independence, the Gettysburg Address, and King's I Have a Dream speech. These fundamental texts teach students that no matter where they come from or who their parents were, every person is created equal and should never be judged by the color of his skin. To be sure, a variety of different theories and views of America can be taught in public schools, but federal and state laws protect individuals against racial discrimination, meaning that students cannot be treated differently because of their race. If a student has been made to feel inferior and unequal based on the color of her skin, she has probably been exposed to a racially hostile environment that violates these guarantees of equal treatment. Moreover, the Constitution, along with federal and state statutes, protects freedom of conscience, meaning that the public schools cannot force students to affirm certain points of view, such as critical race theory's ideas of white supremacy, white privilege, or systemic racism. The Constitution also prohibits compelled speech, meaning that teachers cannot force a student to, student to speak a certain message, such as a confession that I am racist. Public school teachers who violate these basic guarantees open themselves up to lawsuits, discovery, and potential liability. The education department is not helping teachers by presenting them with this discriminatory curriculum. Thank you. Okay. Well, just, just a quick like, sidebar. I do work in a profession where it is valued to work hard, and I don't know that you guys are preparing your workforce and children to understand the difference between equity and equality. It is a big difference. Equity means everybody has the same outcome. That is not how the world works, and you are not preparing them for... <laughs> equity means equal outcomes. Thank you. If you signed up and I missed you, please let me know. Okay. Thank you very much. I am very disturbed by what I mean, please. Oh, oh Sandy Pie. I'm sorry. I'm on the list. Okay. I am very disturbed by what has been taking place within this community where I've lived for over 30 years. 
I cannot begin to fathom the lack of knowledge when it comes to understanding the historical context of people of color, much less that of more recent events. I was a child during the Civil Rights Movement and remember them well. My parents were very much like many of you on the board and in the audience. I've recently been having conversations with adult children of our friends. They are very upset with racist comments being made by their parents. They're angry with, as they term it, the whitewashed history of this country they've received. They're angry they were taught that the blacks that were enslaved were always pictured as happy and appreciative of their positions and never taught of the fear enslaved blacks had of their masters and the horrific treatment they endured day to day. The lack of food, the beatings, families being separated, even being burned alive. They never learned of the full impact of Jim Crow laws and how even once free, blacks were considered subhuman. They recently learned of the Tulsa race massacre because of its 100th anniversary. Did you know there were around 100 other black communities that were devastated? As one young adult put it, she's now woke and cannot educate herself fast enough so that her own children are properly educated on what racism has done to hold down and suppress people of color and those that are biracial. They are angry and feel they have been sold out by the lack of factual history. I have great respect for my friends of color that live in Milwaukee and their commitment to responsibility towards all in their community. I see none of that here in Germantown or any other predominantly white community. I'm part of their community, and it breaks my heart. I'm afraid to have them visit me in mine. In conclusion, in reference to a comment made in response to an email, I am not an oppressor nor do my black friends see me that way. They also don't see themselves as oppressed. I am angry, as are they, that facts are being so horribly misrepresented, beginning with the history of black enslavement in our country to the present day. My friends of all races are working hard in unity and community to bring about conversations to help educate and better understand one another. Until those conversations take place, there will always be divisions. Whether or not you ban CRT, I hope you are wise enough to see that we need factual and complete black history and factual and complete white history to be taught together as part of our factual and complete American history. Thank you. If we want our students to be able to function in what is increasingly a culturally diverse country and world, this is an absolute necessity. Anything less is a disservice to their education. Thank you. Thank you all for speaking tonight. Just for the record, we went on for an hour and a half um, with public comments. Um, we do appreciate the public comments. We do not want to limit it. We like the three minute rule. I think that helps things. But I think hearing for an hour and a half, I think we have a pretty good idea where the community is coming from. So thank you all. Um, on that note, I would like to take a 10 minute comfort break for the board, if you're okay with that. And we'll come back and reconvene in 10 minutes. We will resume in one minute. Okay, the time is 8.56. We are resuming the board meeting. Item four, approval of the minutes of June 7, 2021, Board of Education, and June 7, 2021, closed session. Do I have a motion? Move approval of the June 7, 2021, Board of Education, and closed session minutes. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Reports and updates, uh, reports and information items, virtual charter school grant updates, Mr. Salzman. Yes, thank you. Um, so we were notified uh, about a week and a half ago that we did receive the charter school grant that was applied for. Um, and then at the, for the amount of $800,000 over three years, the first year is a planning year, um, and we can 
we, we can dedicate 150,000 towards, towards that, that plan a year. Um, and the one thing the money cannot buy is people. It can buy it can buy um, uh, technology. It can buy furniture. It can buy space. It can buy any, every, basically everything except for for people. Um, our first our first meeting um, a required meeting that we have to attend with DPI on this is tomorrow um, afternoon. So we'll learn a lot more um, about the the funds, and then we have to submit a. Uh, finalized budget to DPI uh, by September, and I, I do want to um, thank uh, Brenda O'Brien for her work on this as well as the committee that she's been working with to get this put together. It was um, a short uh, dissertation of all the, all the information that had to put together uh, to put that out there. So we're, we're excited for this, and um, you know we look at it as an opportunity, uh, another opportunity for our students. Any, Any questions? questions? Okay, okay, moving on. Village and district school resource officer contract update, Mr. Stutzman. Yes, um, and, and I know Chief Snow is here, and he's more than welcome to come come to the mic if he if he wants to. But I just I want to um, kind of share where we've um, been, and um, hopefully where we're going. Is that uh, we've been in uh, conversations about the SRO at the middle school um, for several months now. And um, the, the one thing is, uh, everyone has heard we have budget um, concerns, and we, we were looking for um, the, the village to pay for a portion of, uh, of the SRO, and that, that proposal um, was given to the, to the village, and I know the village tonight was talking, talking about it. Um, and, and a lot of school districts and, and municipalities um, do share costs in, um, in, in SROs, and um, you know, the one thing, and we've stated this in our meetings, is that uh, as a school district and, and myself, we value the relationship with our SROs, and, and we know um, that building that relationship is great for our students um, as, they, as they go through into adult life, um, high school and middle school, and so it's more than just having um, kind of a good guy with a gun at the, and the facility. It, it really is building these connections and relationships. And, um, you know, we're, we're hopeful that we can work something out. Chief Snow? I uh, thank you. Thank you for letting me speak. I will be. I will be brief. I won't take up a lot of your time. Um, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't be anywhere near three minutes. Um, but thank you. Um, I think this this uh, talk about this will kind of spiral out of control a little bit. I, I talk to people, and I absolutely believe. Um, just so everybody's aware, I absolutely believe that the. School district supports that SRO position. I believe the board supports that SRO position. I understand the challenges um, of a budget. I've been doing it for a while, and I know that it's sometimes it gets tough, and we've got to find ways to pay for it. I do think the um, village is going to discuss some of that tonight and in different ways where um, we can, you know, come up with some more money to fund a little bit more of that position, and I, and I think that's fair, and I think we can get to that, that place. That SRO position, I think everybody understands, um, both of them just do a phenomenal job, I can sit here and tell stories about the connections they make at the school outside of just being a cop. I mean, they wear a lot of different hats up there, they're, they're cops, they're social workers, they're teachers, they're doing a lot of things up there that have a lot of value. And uh, I'm just very encouraged that we're going to find a way to get this job. I thank you all for your time, for your support, um, and I thank the community for their support for that position as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just for clarity and transparency, we wanted to put this on the agenda tonight. Um, the discussions we were having around SRO was not to eliminate the position. No one wants to do that. We were talking about budgetary issues and how we could save money. Um, I think it got out that we were going to cut a position, but that's not the case. We were looking to save money, and that's all it was. Um, so that's why we wanted to clarify and let everybody know what's going on. Um, Ad hoc curriculum committee updates discussed tonight. Um, Tracy? Thank you. Uh, the Ad hoc curriculum committee did meet earlier this evening. 
Uh, one, one thing, thing I do want to just, I mentioned it at the start of the, or near the start of the meeting uh, earlier, but I want to mention it again as well. Uh, there's more faces here now, and, and just to reiterate that what we're trying to do at the committee is take an approach where, for instance, tonight, we had the discussion topics only. There was nothing up for, for action. Uh, if I recall correctly, there was a limited amount of stuff on the May 24th meeting that was actually uh, taken up as far as any sort of votes. So uh, what we were trying to do with that specific committee is discuss, allow some time not only for the committee, but also the board members. Actually, all of us were, were there for that meeting earlier tonight to digest, to process, to do whatever research, ask questions, etc before we revisit those topics where once again we will discuss and possibly take action. We're going to try to stick to that as best we can. Um, is it going to be 100 percent? I'm not comfortable promising that because I don't know what might pop up that we may have to address earlier than usual, but um, at least from my own perspective that's, that's what I'd like to see in, uh, in, in ways of transparency um, and to provide the board the yeah, opportunity to, to, to think about things and, and, and process those. So, so uh, as, as far as the topics that we discussed this <coughs> evening, we did, uh, we did talk about the AP, or the proposed AP government and politics course. Uh, this is going to be one where, where it, this will be a process because of the fact that this would be for the 22-23 uh, school year and between now and then, uh, the, the potential textbooks that would be used for those, that course is probably going to change between now and then. But we, we want to be able to provide a, at least an initial list ultimately of those current textbooks knowing that they're going to potentially change so people can be aware of that. In addition, we also talked about the ACP graduate profile, uh, our uh, relationship with ingenuity or potential relationship with ingenuity uh, to Lucy Calkins writing a potential female CTE course, the leadership mindset, the uh, SEL curriculum, sixth, sixth grade science update in fountains in, excuse me, fountains in Pin Pinnell uh, as well. So we did talk about a lot of things. Ms. O'Brien gave a, a detailed report on each one. I would encourage anyone who's interested to rewatch that full uh, committee meeting that will be made available via the district website. Uh, that is it, unless there's any questions. No, no. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, okay, moving on, unfinished, unfinished business. business. Discussion and possible action regarding critical race theory. Um, I, would I would like to uh, begin with a proposal, proposal for the board, and I'm hopeful that someone will follow suit and help me out up here. Um, what I'd like to see is this item tabled for now, and I'll tell you why. I think there's a lot of heat in this argument on both sides. I, I do believe deep down there's a lot of agreement on what we want for our kids. I believe that both sides are on the same page, but we can't see each other's side right now. What I would propose is that we have a forum, a public forum, where we can actually sit down face to face and have a real conversation about race and equity and critical race theory and all the controversial topics that are going on right now. I think it's important that we do that in a real way. I think this is dividing the community. I think it's distressing to see it in this community as someone who's lived here for 25 years. I'm disturbed by what I'm seeing in this community, and especially on social media. I think there's a lot of misinformation going around. I think the board needs to be able to air their grievances as well and talk about the things that are not happening in the district and that we don't want to have happen in the district. And I think we need to have a real conversation about all of those issues. And I don't think a board meeting is the time to do that. I don't think there's the interaction that you need. There's a time to get into the topic in depth. Um, so that's what I'm hoping we can accomplish tonight, is to move forward with some kind of a community forum where we can all get together and discuss these issues 
without, without the rhetoric, rhetoric without, without the heated debate, debate, be able, able to listen, listen to each other and actually have an honest conversation about what's going on in the district. I think the board would appreciate that. I think our administration would appreciate that. I think that would be helpful for our students moving forward. We need to have open debate. If we can't do it, how do we expect our kids to be able to do it? So that's my proposal. I'll leave it up to uh, anyone else that has any further comments. Uh, I mean, Brian, I think, I think, I think it's, it's a good, good idea. idea. Um, there, there's, there's definitely disagreement in this room, um, but I think there's some reasonable items that we could do this evening, short of waiting for a community forum in the future. Brett, do you have any comments on this? Yeah, so, I mean, so obviously I've been thinking, thinking about this for, for a while. Um, and I went back to some of our established documents in the district, and, and you know, our board, our board goals um, say we believe in respecting one another, treating others with the way we want to be treated, and in doing the right thing. We value and embrace diversity and believe that we are better because of it. The board the objectives indicate we need to establish programs that will encourage and enable full academic, social, and emotional development of each student and make them career ready. The, the, if you pull out the, the Germantown Way, which was established um, several years ago, has the belief that our students have a variety of abilities and learn at different, different rates. Within the Germantown Way is to help our students achieve at their unique individual level and develop their personal interests. In addition, the Germantown Way established the belief in teaching a breadth of topics and allow our students to dig into topics that, are, that they are passionate about. Many of our elective courses stem from, from from this belief that, that to, to give, give kids as many options as they, they can in our district. I think, you know, and I, 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 for me, I, I got stuck on more of banning something. Um, I, I think we're going backwards and counter to our board goals in German Kong way if we ban a topic without proper process or discussing what, just what Brian was, was talking about. Because defining what does a ban mean, um, I mean, currently we have, we have some safeguards in place. We have some policies, and, and all changes to curricular, curriculum and programming have to come through the board for approval. Um, I believe banning a topic without properly defining it is dangerous for our students, it's dangerous for our, our staff. I can see staff not wanting to, to touch a piece of our curriculum that's in our curriculum because they think it's a capillary to to CRT or, or the A topic that's being banned. Um, and, you know, I think, I think we have to spend the time to define what does this ban mean. Um, and, and there are terms that, that have been mentioned tonight from diversity, equity, inclusion. Those are foundational pieces to what we've been doing in our district for a long time. Before I was here, um, you were doing this. Look, there's some stuff in 19, document from 1976 that, that has the words inclusion and diversity. And inclusion is, a, is the cornerstone of our special ed program. So, I, you know, discover, finding out what we mean when we say we're banning something to me is, is really important because it, it can, without that, we're gonna paralyze ourselves, um, I think, to move forward. Um, I like, love the idea of, of having more of a forum uh, piece where people can talk and if we were able to, Put the energies from both sides of the room uh, together. I think we can do some some great things, and, and we could be stronger for it as a district. Um, because I, I heard things again. I picked things that were being said um, from kind of both sides of the room. And I heard the words kindness. I heard develop unity. I heard middle ground. I heard teach appreciation for others. I don't think those are things that people disagree with, right? It's, it's, but, but how do we, we get there? there? What, what does that look like uh, in, in our in our system? system. But um, to me, I'm, I'm concerned, concerned with, with banning anything, anything at this point if we can't, can't fully describe it and define it. Brian, right. right. um, I'd, I'd like, like to add to that. that when there, there, there seems to be a difference in definitions when we're talking about language around these issues as well. When we were talking about equity, when we tasked Brenda to look into equity, we were asking her to look to make sure that all of our students were included in our curriculum. It was more of an inclusive exercise to find out that to make sure that all of our kids feel represented in the district, that they are a part of our community, that they feel safe in our community, that they're welcome. 
um, that they're not, you know, somehow different than everybody else because we never talk about them or their culture. So that's the idea behind the whole background of what we were trying to create when we used the word equity. Now, I know there's a lot of differences people think about equity, and they have a completely different emotional response to it. We need to get through all that in order to get moving forward. So that's why I think a forum would be helpful in a lot of ways. Just working on one word would be helpful. Uh, Thank you, Brian. And um, turn the clock back. Uh, this whole thing started when we had an incident right here in this high school uh, where the N-word was used. Shortly thereafter, we had uh, another incident with the Burger King hat with uh, my dear friend, her son. Uh, we went public with that. We, uh, the board, supported that that was wrong. We don't believe in racism. So that's where we're at now. But look at this. Look where we're at now. we got one side here, one side here. I welcome the conversation, I welcome the dialogue. We're learning, and that's what we're supposed to be lifelong learners. One side is drinking the Kool-Aid, the other side is drinking the Kool-Aid. We don't even know what CRT is defined the Germantown way. I, and I, Ch Chaz or Chad, I apologize. You, you, you were spot on when you said CRT and DEI. I am very proud of my efforts in DEI. And thank you very much for sharing our statement on that with my employer. I'm very proud of that. I will stand by on what I do every day in the area of diversity and inclusion. I support equity. I'm going to read this here. Equality means each individual or group of people is given the same resources or opportunities. We all want that. Equity recognizes that each person has a different circumstance and allocates resources and opportunities needed to reach an outcome. We want that. We're doing that today. We've got on our school report card, we've got the achievement gap. Our goal as the board, but also as staff, is to shorten that gap. How are we doing that? Equity. We're doing that today. I learn a lot in terms of my learning on CRT when this whole thing started three months ago. We were told that we were not teaching CRT in our schools. Today, we are told that we are teaching CRT in our schools. But what exactly are we teaching? How is it defined? So there's a lot of learning that we all need to do today. Uh, and I support what you're saying, Brian. I support Brian what you're saying. Um, again, we, 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 I don't believe in racism. I believe in privilege. I'm privileged. Of course I'm privileged. I believe in systemic racism. Look around us in our community, in our region. We've got to bridge the gap. There's got to be a middle road. What path that is, I don't know. But we can do better in our community. I don't believe in CRT. I don't believe that. But I am a staunch supporter and a champion of DEI. I think, I think we, we all are. We want to be more diverse. Look at the board here. Look at everybody here. We want to be more inclusive. Our goal is to do that. And then, yes, we want equity. And we want equality. So I support what you're saying, Brian. Um, I think everyone needs to understand where the other side is coming from, but we also need to understand what we can do to make you all feel comfortable that we're not going to indoctrinate your students in the classroom. That all needs to come out. We need to understand how to make everybody comfortable that you know we're not going to treat children of color differently than we are our white students. That everyone is going to be treated equally. That all those things are happening in our district. We want everyone to feel like their kids can come here and be supported and get a good education and learn. That's what it's all about. Not what to think, but it's about how to think. And that's been my goal since I've been here. And I think it's been the board goal since I've been here. And I'd like to move forward with that. So I hope somebody can give me a motion that moves us in that direction. Anyone else? Hey, Brian. I really don't have any interest in dragging this out. I'd like to just go ahead with the motions to ban this this evening. We, we've got the community here now. We've heard from both sides. Why table it? I don't know about you or the rest of the board members. I've done more reading of links on CRT 
than I have anything else in the last two or three months. And I've read links from the site that supports CRT, and I see in those links, if you know what you're looking for, there's Marxism in there and there's communism in there. And I hate Marxism and communism. Just, just so all of you know, I grew up in the Cold War, which ended with the fall of the Iron Curtain in 1989. I thought I was done with communism. I worked with people from Russia and other communist countries. I worked with people from neighbors of communist countries. It's a bad system. The reason why the Iron Curtain fell is because communism had failed, and so did Marxism. All you had to do was go to East Germany and see what a mess it was. West Germany was a thriving economy, and East Germany was a dump. It was a garbage dump. I will not have that taught in our schools. So, Alec, I don't know if anyone wants to go ahead and read the first motion. Tom, if you want to, I'll second it. So, approximately two months ago, I took my seat on this board, uh, and at the time, that's the meeting that we voted to rescind the ban, and I was one of the yeas to rescind the ban. And I mentioned during that meeting that it was my opinion, my opinion only, that I, I wasn't convinced that, that this board that I am now part of has gone through all the different steps that we need to do to, to make the proper choice whichever way it goes. And I still believe that. And I can tell you that, to the points that were brought up earlier, I've spent by far the majority of my time over the last two months reading the links that have been shared with me going out and doing as best of a job as I can to read both sides. And ultimately, where I came down to was, I gotta get away from the current and go back in time and start there with what is critical race theory, reading Bell, reading all the other folks who are involved with, with its development. Ultimately, I'm only one member of this board and I will go with what the board thinks. If, if what's in the best interest of this community is to table it and have this discussion, okay. But I've also spent two months prepping for this vote. And when I saw it on the agenda tonight, I made some certain assumptions as far as what this discussion may be. Honestly, I didn't necessarily uh, anticipate a public forum but if, if that is one of those additional steps to make sure we dot our I's, cross our T's, I'm, I'm okay with that. But I'm also okay if we needed to, to do a vote tonight as well. And I, have, I can share my reasons at that point as far as what my thoughts are. That's right. Um, the thing that I want to make sure we're doing is obviously crossing our T's and dotting our I's, but what policy will this lie in, right? Where is our clear definition, our ex expectation, what are our expectations going to be? Um, where is this going to be held? How would we hold staff accountable? There's so many questions that we still need to answer. And obviously those would be held in the policy to help our staff, our parents, our teachers. Um, so I... I would make a motion that we have a public forum so we can come to an agreement that we understand there are things that we do not want, but we also understand there are things that we want our students to know. And, and, and our, our, I don't know about the rest of you, but I can only imagine. I care so much about this community. And, and to, to see, see the divide, divide is heartbreaking. So, so if we, we can do better, I would love, love to do better. I have a motion on the table, but I have a second. I'll second. Further discussion? Further discussion? 
Well, as you know, I'll be voting no on this. The public forum is here this evening. There's no reason to table it. This is, this is ridiculous. Any other comments? That's right. Uh, we've, got, we've got parents here that are going to move their, school, their children out of the school district. Depending on what Mr. Thompson, what's the earliest you could get a public forum on a calendar? July. Mid-July. I just have a question. What happens after the public forum when we don't get any resolution? I'm just curious. I didn't do that. Do we have another public forum? And we drag this out to another year? So, go ahead. You have a second on the, on the thing. I have a discussion. So we've been told it's in 180 class, AP English Literature. It's in one other elective class, critical thinking and writing. Specific to the AP class, if we remove the CRT content, if we would outright ban CRT, those students would be unprepared for the AP exam. So I don't see that as reasonable. Um, could we remove that content from the other elective class? Sure, but it's an elective class. If parents know that that content is in there, then I don't necessarily see a problem with it. Um, you know, for me, I, I'd like to see this resolved tonight. Um, I can live with CRT being in those two classes as long as parents have an opt-in process to let their students take that class. I know the ad hoc curriculum committee is working on that. Um, but we need to do something to stop the expansion of CRT without board approval. Why? I think that's already been done. Um, when I made the motion to reenact um, CRT in the district, it was because of those two classes. At no point did I say that we were endorsing CRT in the district the way that it's being described here tonight. And it became part of us redirecting the um, controversial subjects in the classroom where it was going to be just related to instructional goals, does not indoctrinate or persuade, encourages open-mindedness, the district administrator shall develop administrative guidelines for dealing with controversial issues. I think that's settled it. But obviously in the community that it didn't happen. That's why I think we need further discussions to describe exactly what's going to happen going forward, what our parents think about the decisions that we're making and how we can control those things and keep that out of the classroom. I think we've done that, and we also notify the parents appropriately when controversial items are discussed in the classroom. So I don't think there's all these things are going to happen in the classroom because of what we've done, and I don't think banning it changes everything, anything. So I would like to keep the community focused on education moving forward and stop to talk about um, CRT and what's not happening in the classroom. Brett, uh, if the board decides to do the forum, we're, we're okay with that. You're okay with that. If the board decides to go down a different path and restrict CRT to those two classes, how do we know that DEI will be taught or will be talked about within our classrooms? Because we, we need to talk about race. We need to talk about what's happening. I think and that's, that's and some of the questions. questions. About, um, I forgot, uh, Kim's gone, but when she said that, oh, there she is, you're back in the corner. When, 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 you, when you talked about, we, we, need, we need to talk about history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I support that 100%. And I, could only, I only hope that we're doing that today in our classroom. So, and, and I think when I, when I say we don't, have, have this understanding of what a ban means because we've heard. I'm not, I'm not saying, saying a ban. I'm saying right, but I'm just saying it's it's CRT. Is that if they're saying we want we want CRT, I also heard that also means no, no we're not going to talk diversity, not going to talk equity, not going to talk inclusion. So those are the things that have to, I think have to be parceled out to know what is what is getting rid of CRT because if it's if it's really not anywhere else in our curriculum, you're banning nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. exist. I mean, you're banning, and if you're allowing those two courses where it is, well, then we're, we haven't changed anything in the 10 years. 
right? Because right? that's, that's these courses have been around for ten plus years. So, so I, I I think, think defining, defining what, what that means is, is really important. Because if it's just saying we don't want the term CRT in anywhere except for those two courses, that's how it is right now. So. Okay. Right, 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 right. Oh, okay. I, I think um, I, have I have no issue. I have no issue with uh, DEI and um, the, I consider diversity, equality, and inequity, uh, or, or inclusion, I should say, DEI. Um, I don't think that that's what CRT is. What I stated on uh, 426, 2021, is the Marxist scholars have never gone away. They tried to get Marxism, communism, socialism, and so on into this country by pitting the upper class against the lower class. It didn't work because their middle class was too big, it was too strong. It just failed. But, as I said, the Marxists, socialists, communists have not gone away. So they came up with a new idea, and it's called pitting us against one another, people of color against white people. I have nothing against the people of color. I'm not a racist. I've been accused of a red scare. I've even been called uh, Joseph McCarthy. I know my history well. I've studied it well. I've learned most of it in my adult life because my... U.S. history teacher in high school stunk, so I had to teach myself, and I've done a very good job with it. So what I would like to do is uh, go ahead and vote down the motion that's on the table now, and go ahead and vote for, move for the list of motions that I passed out at the beginning of this meeting. And when those in the audience claim that I violated my oath by saying yesterday that I was going to ban CRT, what I was really doing was being transparent. I told you yesterday what I was going to do today. It doesn't mean I didn't listen to what was going on in this room today. I just told you yesterday transparently, look, I'm not going to vote to keep CRT. I'm going to vote to ban it. That's just the way it is because I don't approve of Marxism, communism, or socialism. And there's a few citizens here that have pointed it out that it hasn't worked very well in the countries where it's been tried. That it includes Russia, the USSR, Mao Zedong, China, Venezuela, North Korea, Cuba, and a few other places. There's 100 million humans dead. Do you want to bring that to the, U to the United States? I don't. I don't want to bring it to your children, the children of people of color, and I don't want to bring it to anyone's children. So don't view me as the bad guy here. I'm the guy that's watching out for your children. Not, not the ones that support CRT. You know, you know it, it really irritates me after communism fell and the USSR fell in 1989 that I have to sit here on this evening and preach about how bad communism and Marxism is. We don't need it here. Do any of you know what's going on in Venezuela? So, so why would you want to pit white students against black students? That's, That's what, what it is. is. You, you, you really need to educate yourself. And instead of telling me I'm Joseph McCarthy, which, by the way, history has proven that McCarthy was correct in most cases, so I don't want to hear it. Yeah, educate yourself. Okay, any further comments? The information has... I didn't, I didn't interrupt you when you were speaking, and it's now my turn. Why 
Okay, okay please. Please. I have, a, I have a motion on the table. I have a motion on the table to table this and have a community forum. I have a second. Any further discussion? All right, folks, come on. Please. This is please. Please. Good night. We have a motion and a second. Do we move forward? I'm trying. No, oh, speak up. Okay, a motion and a second on the table to um, to table this discussion and make a public forum moving forward. Do we have a second on the motion? Yes, I second. You seconded Mike's motion? I don't know. Second, second your motion. motion. Okay. Bob, Bob, Bob was the second. I was second. Yeah. Yes. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Can I have no's again? No. No. Four no's. no's. Okay, that fails. Any further discussion? I'd like to make. Another motion, unless you want to bring it back, but bringing it back is about three weeks. Unless Tom wants to make a motion, I think he might have some ideas. No, he, he got some. Okay. I move to constrain the instruction of critical, critical race theory in critical thinking and yeah, there's some handwriting here, so I gotta get this right. Are you looking, looking for, for the course, course names? names? It's critical thinking and writing as well as AP literature. Right, so 
I don't, the, the wording is going to sound a little odd, but okay. I move to constrain the instruction of critical race theory to critical thinking and writing, AP English literature and composition, and provide a parental consent form acknowledging the introduction of this theory or other critical theories within the course materials. Second. Any discussion? So I'd like to just clarify because that's a little wordy. We're not going to teach critical race in the school district except for in the two classes that I just mentioned. So will we still be meeting as a policy or, or in policy to actually define that information so we can provide a definition and then expectations, right? Right, so I mean, I, I appreciate you being on the policy committee and pointing it out that we can't really change curriculum uh, this school year anymore. But, um, you know, since we're not teaching critical race theory in any other classes except these two, I think we're good to go. If, if we wanted to remove it from the class that's not AP, we have to do it, I believe. We, do. we, do. we would have to wait a whole other year in order to do that. But before April 1st. Are you driving at a definition for critical race? Correct, an actual definition for CRT. I guess for me, where I would start with this is, we know by name critical race theories in these two classes. Mm -hmm. This motion says, okay. that's it. For something named critical race theory, it ends at those two classes. Could there be future discussion to define other types of education that might be happening that could be construed as indoctrination? Maybe. But for now, anything named CRT or critical race theory, that's what's encapsulated in this motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yeah, I, 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 I'll stand by my comments on DEI and what Brett said. Um, if, if what we've been told is accurate, that CRT, whatever that is defined as, the Germantown way is being taught in these two classes, I'm okay with that. But my concern is, what are we doing about DEI? How are we teaching? We need to talk about race. We need to talk about systemic racism. We need to talk about the good things that are happening in our community and the bad things that are happening in our community. And I'm concerned that outside of policy, our teachers are going to be gun shy if I bring up race in a class. And I want them to talk about that. I mean, I've been to 84 countries throughout the world. They're all like us. It's the knuckleheads at the top that, that set policy. We need to get along. And as you can see, there's a gap here. So my concern is less about CRT, because, because from what we've been told, it's in those two classes. My concern is, are we going to put the brakes on DEI? And if this motion is going to squash that, I'm not going to vote for it, because I'm concerned about it. But, but if, we've got, got, if we've got a comfort level, level as a board that we're committed to moving forward with DEI, whether that's, whether that's with the ACE committee, whether that's with a public forum, which we need to get together and talk about this. We really do. And yeah, we're talking about it now. But we need to get other stakeholders in. We need to get community leaders in. We need to be here. So I, I welcome that conversation. Not, Not just here where you've got, got one side and you've got, got the other side. So I support, if, if it's just contained in those two classes, and if we could move forward, if we're, if we're comfortable as a board, that we're going to move forward and we're going to champion DEI in the Germantown School District, I'll support it. Hey, Brian, I, uh, in this motion I just made, I do not believe that I banned diversity, equality, and inclusion. I don't believe I did. But if those words are spelled out in CRT, I would take a friendly amendment to add that this does not include uh, DEI. I have no issue with DEI. And when it comes to the company I work for, I work, for, I work with all sorts of diverse people. 
So, so when, when I'm questioning, will I go to my board and complain about DEI? Why would I do that? I don't have an issue with it. Uh, what I do have an issue is when someone tells me I have white privilege or white supremacy, and that's what CRT is. So, so you would accept a, a motion or addition to your motion on we want to continue to move forward with the district's efforts in DEI? Right. Um, there were there were about seven things that the teachers there there were about seven things that teachers presented. I believe on 426 that they felt they couldn't teach if we banned CRT. And truthfully, I felt that they were just reading into the ban. The part that we don't want taught is people of color are oppressed, and white people are the oppressors. I I I help. Diverse people at work regularly, and when they show up in my office, I don't say, Oh, look, there's a diverse person standing in front of me. I need to do something special for them. I'm just happy that they value my opinion and come for my help. You know, when it comes to engineering questions, I don't care if, if they're white or not, it doesn't matter to me. What's the motion on the table again? <laughs> Shall I read it again? Yeah, yeah please. please. Including the DEI part. Okay. okay. I move to constrain the instruction of critical race theory uh, to critical thinking and writing, AP English literature and composition, and provide parental consent form acknowledging the introduction of this theory or other critical theories within the course materials. This ban on CRT does not include diversity, equality, and inclusion. Mr. Brown, yeah, yeah, a comment that uh, Mrs. O'Brien had made uh, back in April was, I think there was teachers that could, were concerned that they couldn't teach about Jim Crow laws, or gerrymandering, or incarceration, incarceration statistics, voting laws, laws absentee, absentee ballots, things like that. This motion does nothing about those things. Those will continue to be taught. I guess my concern is, my concern is that we haven't defined what CRT is, and there's a lot of people that have different definitions of what CRT is, and I don't know if anybody's really going to know what we're banning. Well, I don't think we're banning anything. We're restricting it to those two classes right now. Correct, but right. you open up the can of worms that if a student asks a question about CRT, you're going to tell them we can't talk about that? I mean, that's not education. That's not, I'm not a fan of banning and silencing, and I, I have a huge disagreement with this. I just don't think we're heading in the right direction as far as the educational district if we're doing this. Mr. Paul. I, mean, I, I can understand your concern regarding the if we move forward with this and a student asks the question that that maybe takes them along that road, but to your point, that's not education, but that's also, I think, if I'm understanding this correctly, and I have a question, we're not preventing that. We aren't saying students can't ask about something that might be specifically related to the original concept of CRT 40 ish years ago, or what might be going on in society today. The way I understand it, because I think Mr. Barney asked the question, explicit mention of critical race theory. Is that what, is that what this is doing? And we, we don't, don't know, that's, that's my point. point. But, 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 but I think the answer was yes. I mean, people could define that differently, that's my point. You have a different take on it than somebody else would. That's, That's my concern, concern moving forward. Hey, hey, Brian. There's, There's a few, few more motions here we have to talk about yet. <sighs> okay. I handed out a list of four. Okay, we have more on the table. And I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. That passed. Who, who was the no? We did it. We did it. We roll call. We, we, we. You have a roll call? Who was the no? Brian. Okay. okay. Everyone, Everyone else was yes. yes. Yep. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Okay, we're not. 
I think uh, the additional motions will answer some of the other questions that we've been talking about. I don't know that we can go through those tonight if they're not specific to critical race theory. We'll move forward with one that we have, Mike, and then we'll discuss the rest of those later. I kind of thought these were all critical race. That's why I included them. Okay. We're moving on to new business. Discussion and action to prove donations, Mr. Southland. Yes. Thank you. Um, one thing that I've noticed um, since being here, it seems like every month we have donations from the community, which is which is amazing and impressive. And um, I don't know if I've been in a district where each month they're, we're, accept, we're accepting donations. Um, this month we have six different uh, donations. First one, um, I'd ask the board to approve the donation of sandblasting cabinet from JW Speaker, valued at $4,000 for Germantown High School Technology Education Department. Approve the MacArthur PTA, PTA donation of two Gaga pits, valued at $7,170.10 for MacArthur Elementary School. Approve the donation of $250 from Power Test for Germantown High School Boys Golf. Approve the donation of $250 from Mayor Landscapes for Germantown High School Track and Field. And approve the donation of $2,000 from Germantown Baseball and Fast Pitch for Kennedy Middle School Softball Dugouts. And finally, approve the donation of $500 from Dan and Lisa Nimmer for Germantown High School Choir Program. Make a motion to thank the donors for their generosity and for the donations as listed. Second. Any discussion? Mike? I'll uh, show my bias here towards Tech Ed, and uh, I'd like to especially thank a GW Speaker for the sandblasting cabinet. I sure wish I had one at home, but as always, um, I'd like to recommend all students, no matter uh, what their path in life, college or otherwise, please take a Tech Ed course, and uh, you might get to use the sandblasting cabinet. I'd also like to thank all the rest of the uh, donors. Uh, our donors are very generous, and uh, the school district really appreciates it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Discussion and action to approve teacher contracts, Mr. Stelzman. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to hand over, over the next uh, uh, actually three, three things to Mr. Nowak. Nowak. Two, two things, sorry. Thank you. Uh, we have two teacher contracts being bring forward tonight. The first is uh, actually they're both for English teachers at Germantown High School. The first is for John Plasky. Um, it is a 1.0 regular contract for $42,250. Uh, the next is for Aaron Dietrich, again an English teacher at the high school. Um, it's a regular contract for $41,500. Motion to approve the contract as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passed. Discussion and action to approve supplemental contracts. Mr. Nelson. Thank you. Um, this is the time of year where we uh, bring forward supplemental contracts. And as a reminder, um, these contracts uh, sort of um, in some ways bridge between two years. So they would the work would begin this summer, post July one, and then end next summer prior to July one. Um, rather than go through all the names, I'll just go through by position. Um, so there is a social, school social worker uh, request from the high school, a school psychologist request throughout the district, um, school social worker request from the middle school, uh, counselor request from the high school, and included is that in that is a master scheduler. Counselor requests from the middle school, and then uh, a request for the library specialists uh, at the high school and the middle school. These requests are similar to what have occurred in the past, and I would add that they're very similar to what we see in other districts relative to uh, sort of extra work that occurs. In some districts, uh, their, their contracts are actually built on more days. We do our regular contract at 191 days and then provide the supplemental contract as part of the process. Brian, I'll make a motion to approve the 2021-2022 supplemental teacher contracts. Second. Any discussion? Any 
Aye. 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 Aye